we are live. Hello and welcome back to the second part or second day, whatever way to say it, of our playthrough of the Skolysium. Yesterday we ended up finally returning back to the game. What was it called again? I forgot the name. To the bar and paying off our debt that we incurred by uh, breaking a window and destroying a bunch of shit. And today we will keep on continuing exploring, I guess. We have a, a whole bunch of things to do. And to start things off, I think I'll want to talk with this kind old lady. Hello again, sweetie. Who doesn't have anything? Never mind. There is one man here we can talk to. Hello. It's all about money, you know? You just want money to make money. Money is what really matters. Okay, he doesn't have more to say. A man is sleeping at the table, wearing mud cake boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. Oh. Okay. That was easy. Uh, let's try breaking him up. You gently oh. shake his shoulder. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Uh, An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too Maybe well for me. you haven't turned out well for your drinking. <laughs> Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. No, what, what the fuck? Happened, man? You used to be <laughs> cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. Get your drink on and your act together. <laughs> so it's cool to drink stuff straight, uh, to, to lick stains of drink straight from the counter that reasonable yeah uh, oh yeah all right i wanted to yeah. i wanted to yeah. what did i want to i almost have enough experience for any idea Hello again, my man. What's on your mind? <laughs> you seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Just be straight with me. Let me say with you, I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of terminal. We have a lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bus shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms, and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Why are you still hanging Gotta out? Guard the stuff. Bosses mm. don't look kindly on missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. A rhymesmith? This is quite credible. 
It goes with its cadence. <laughs> and way, way of speaking. speaking. Who do you think could be conducting the Look, truck trade, Vin? I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachon. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. It's not a lie. It's something else. Impossible to say what at this point. But there's something in him. Some trepidation. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. Oh, I can I start a rap battle? Come on, I wanna. Wait. Let's go! There's something here. Stored away in some dusty corner. It starts like... A mirror's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its camera is an x-ray. Whoa. What else? It is a chalice held out to you in silent communion. Silent communion. That's good. Where gaspingly, you partake of a shifting identity, never your Dang. own. That's some great shit. You came up with that yourself. Just did. Did you? I, well, I mean, I don't actually know. <laughs> no matter. Great verses like that sometimes. Ephemeral. You might not look it. Seems you have some literary chops. Maybe there's hope for me yet. <laughs> That's a strange compliment. With you. It's cool. You're an okay guy. You're a cop. Or a They're cop. more often in the fists than rhymes, see? Let alone honesty and verse. In a small office behind the old military hospital. Hunched under the green glow of his desk light, Officer Hans Blau browses through a test print of his Futurist magazine. It's called The Futurist. The typeface on the header is too small. I'm doing what little I can to do right by people. Well, you've given me some hope, I guess. He gives you a thumbs up. found some common ground with this man. Even impressed him. The next time you look in the mirror, though, Remember those words. I mean, I've already started begging. Might keep huh? begging now. Oh, no, I ain't got any money. Uh -huh. They don't want up the bosses, man. <laughs> Sounds like a good arrangement for yeah, them. Yeah, sure ain't good for me or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck if I had saved four myself. Yeah, that seems reasonable. That's all for now then. Bye. Uh, how do I... How do I use my feet again? Like this. Yo, grandma, you ready to speak now? Still has her eyes fixed on the foot. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. <laughs> Snap your fingers twice. Where am I? Who are you? Like a magician recalling a subject from hypnosis, you've jolted her back to the reality. Smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. You're right, ma'am. You I seem kind of. mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. Not so bad about the 50s. The men have the small jaws and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Hmm. Where else would you be then? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution. The side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. Who the? Who's Gabriel Buenguero? This is Gabriel Buenguero. She shows you the photograph in the lavish amber frame. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. 
and a school boys used to memorize all his lines. She leans back, savoring the world she's conjured up. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. So I take it you were a mess when you were so young. Someone was. Someone. But these are not your memories. They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? They are beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They are coming for this, you know? All of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought. As if the past will one day wipe the present away. Like a tidal wave approaching. Yeah. Well, sorry that I interrupted your dreaming. I man. wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the mine behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. Her eyes narrow and she appears to take your measure. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in meth, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesk is a massive confederation on the Isola of Muindi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petro state. A constitutional monarchy, and as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Huh. I have some other questions for you. Please Why questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. She settles back against the railing of her motor lorry. Behind her, mountains of memorabilia, photos, and knickknacks line the dashboard. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? It would be. But what are you really hauling? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. So you don't know what you have in your own lorry? I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo. If you know what I mean. Huh. Um, what if the cargo is contraband? Then it's contraband, low man. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. Bad hand? Hermenegildos' bad hand strangled 300 people. What can I say? Some people just really like strangling people. Um, I don't really understand this whole Boyadero of course thing. Not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the western plain. What's that? The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. He is a rugged individualist and explorer. Okay, what's that? It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. Mm, but I'm guessing that doesn't happen. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. Mm. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring oh, eyes. Okay, see where this is going. So the Boyadero strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. Oh, I, I would like to take back what I just said. You have to understand. A true Boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can't be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. What if to truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? Before I came here, you seemed kind of away. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to us. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler. You hear that, old man? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Why is that, Lieutenant? Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. 
something unconnected to the case, but connected to this woman tuning out like that. Hmm. That's the question. Should you really be driving a lorry if you oh, get like that? Don't worry about me. I'm one of the best communers around. I love roots, no one else will. What roots? The Monosov's land, Udajnaya Zemlia, the Western Plain, the Transcatalia Magistral, you for one hey. Aristradas do mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. Mm. You know, I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should probably take better care of yourself. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. <laughs> Thank you for looking out for me. Is that all you woke me up to say? Um, what was another thing? You kind of seem like a woman who knows a few about drugs. What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. What? Yes. There is a protagonista and an adversario. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. Those epithets are familiar somehow. The great adversary. The great unrest. <laughs> How could I get an experience like that? If you don't know, <laughs> Maybe if she thought you're corrupt. Hmm. Huh. What I wanted to ask if you'd be interested in smuggling some drugs. Why would I want to do that? The glory of the World Republic, liberation of the spirit and body. Loma, what in the name of God are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal Maybe. B? Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. You said earlier, you don't know what cargo you're holding. Could Just it be drugs? Just this month, I made half of those in trips from Saramiriza to Grad. The U for one a What do you think they take from Saramiriza to Grad, Loman? Drugs? No. Loman diamonds. Uh, okay. If you had to guess, who do you think is smuggling drugs he around here? He's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. Nah, That's he's cool. He's the only one I can see from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. Okay, if you're not involved with the drug trafficking, then why are you still waiting here? Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palate cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the great plains. I think we're done here, no? Hmm. Thank you for now. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesfi. Well, it was a bit of a failure. stuck in the traffic jam this big heavy grad made machine is well kept for such an old machine hmm. the windows are clear they've been recently washed you can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings stickers insignia what kind of stickers and insignia oh, wait actually before i before i finish that Spend one skill point to unlock a new slot. Yes, please. Uh, I can use a skill point to forget it later, so I think I'll take the advanced race theory. Just so I can, you know, get to the big man. What kind of stickers? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep. Large ashtrays, a book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, 
man from Eelmdal, in the lost city of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. The story belongs to him? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Hmm. Oh, maybe we can ask him some questions then. Hey, Mr. Racist Man. Looking for something? Oh, I found this mark in the trash. Is it yours? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. So it yours? God, man. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinez. Mm hmm. You're a lorry man, right? It's his stance on drugs. Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette. Why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Ilmara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight. So they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage. Racial economic sabotage. There's your end. Take his side in this particular fight. Hmm. Like, listen, man, I can't agree. It's our responsibility to keep this poison off the streets of Forever Show, right? advise you wearily. Unsure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds. Then, damn, it didn't work. You should have signaled you're a nationalist before. <laughs> I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. And what are you still hanging around here for? Most other coming years have left. What do you think? I can't leave the Lorient unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, uh, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. Mm, I did see a one lorry after the trailer doors open away. You know what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved this country. We were having a good debate about genetics at the Wheeling in Rags when some kid boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. <laughs> That's kind of bad for him, it's I guess. It's a fucking tourist, is what it is. It's not even who's running drugs for fruit on the Isn't it obvious? Fucking sealant. That beady eyed South Samaran. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Ooh. He's a Samaran guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Or really, he's just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his human ox lorry. You know where I can find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like uh, apricot and oil when you're nearby. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like uh, I offended your partner there. Too bad. Sea Lang's usually a little bit south of here, near the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, all right. One hundred percent. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Sea Lang himself Oh, guess we gotta pay him a visit then. Guess so. We're done for now. Hello again, officer. How are things? Can I ask you what the fuck the police business is? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. She yeah. shifts yeah. in. Oh, I haven't gone here yet. Wait till Tony Cross has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. An ancient fountain it doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it.
tire trackings leading onto the roof. The slush and rain has almost washed them off. The spirit chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Life doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to angry old René first. Hello, angry old René. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. René, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? This one's still chewing on a sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. Whoa, what's happening? You are immediately surprised by the boar's lack of weight. No matter. You make it work. What the hell is happening? The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already your muscles are adjusting to the weight. The nervous system calibrating. Until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. <laughs> the, the man ball. Is ready. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there feet firmly planted all sounds smells even the wind everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. that is time for a last glance inward who am i an embodiment of pure motion a fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. <laughs> the inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. of shit what the hell is your problem <laughs> I just took one of the balls and threw it into the ocean <laughs> I don't understand what's the problem well, like our game son we can't flip a tonk with five bull Oh, Petonk. Ah, no, I understand. No, you don't. Our Petonk game is ruined. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are <laughs> as a goddamn bull. Hold up the shot, what ball? Wait, what, 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 what kind of thing? Will this do? No, no, it will, it God. will God damn not. Okay, okay. Thank you, officer. This is really something. Honestly, I think it's better than our old bull, even. Ah, uh, mon dieu. All right, all right, fine. What do you want, officer? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Just talk. It will smooth things over. Old people like attention. Seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. You know what created it? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Ah. But why, why is what? it left here? And I mean, why, why was the heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Who are the communists again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. 
Senseless sentimentality. Hmm. Did you use the artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. <laughs> it was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with this suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the Suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. We probably should have chosen a place away from people and buildings. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. A beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Deathblow. That sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petanque on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Except where everything is so bombed out. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players at the table. Let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... W what do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. <laughs> I think he'll like it more if I say this. Grand powers clean up a mess and now they're rulers. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. How does Philippe the Third factor into this? He doesn't. That was 100 years ago. It had nothing to do with anything. Oh, okay. What exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is a king. Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Is there anything you could tell me about this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Prevachal made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing, and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? Hmm. I mean, all the other weapons ever broken as well. 
There's a basement there. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Hmm. You happen to know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of Whirling and Rex? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law. So can you really mm. blame them? We don't have a problem with the cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem, Miss Policeman. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. <laughs> what about police women? I am confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. Ah, oh, come on. There are no duties as the woman couldn't carry it. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? No, I don't think there's any evolutionary inequality at play here. Really, officer? <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. Mm. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. I see. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? All you observe is a veteran refusing to... This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven. Although he was a clown, but he was our clown. <laughs> oh, he was our, our clown. And to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Thank you for that. How about you? You finished with your sandwich? I have really held down myself. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. Rene, tsk, tsk. it's a little pleasure. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Might if I take a bite of the sandwich? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Not oh, the it's only okay. one you have. Ah, oh, it's okay. I'm not oh, hungry anyway. That's good. That's very good. You must have other business then. <laughs> What do you know about the dead man? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Come on, you must have heard something. No, officers, I'm sorry. And I really would like to assist. Then help them, you wimp. <laughs> you have plenty of shoulder with the ghost caviar in the Union. Someone must know something. He means caviar socialists. I wish I could. But I just don't know anything. I always keep my nose clean and don't gossip. Everyone know respects. It's a bit like you're holding back. I'm not. I'm not even any. Of course he's holding back. His mouth is so full of union prick he can't even speak properly. Can I at least finish my fucking sentence before you piss on it? Is that okay, Rene? I'm not anyone impotent in the Union. I just know Evra. How do you know Evra? Everyone in Martinez knows the Claire brother. I taught this boy's human studies and history in the gymnasium. Oh. What do you know about history? You never witnessed history. Only heard about it years later when it had already moved on. You don't know history. The old soldier mumbles something under his breath. There he stands, proud, rigid and alone, like a cracking marble statue. Let's try not to get caught in a crossfire. Lest we leave riddled with bullet holes. This animosity is ancient. Well, if you know him, could you help me get inside the harbor? No, I'm sorry, officer. I don't even have a key card. Evart usually sends someone to get me when he wants to talk. Oh, I see. 
That's off an oven, thank you. No, thank you. For being consummate professionals. You'll have this case wrapped up in no time. Well, we'll do our best. Bye for now. Hello. Get them off your watch around me, boy. <gasps> Got a friendly neighborhood drunk, that isn't me. Splash of bullet holes lines the wall. Oh, okay. Not uh, doesn't seem to be anything else we can do down here. We can take a plastic bag, a bag with which we can start collecting bottles. This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubble gum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Oh. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis. Or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. Mm. The church looks old and weather worn. There are no lights in the windows. This coin operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 sentences. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? Oh, let's try Your money disappears into the coin slot. Uh, the curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab grey shape. Like a ghost. And an up to focus your vision. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Its leaves ripped from it by the winter wind. Hang in there, little the one. The little brave birch tree seems to wave back in the wind. Varoons are some kind of building there. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. Oh, I'm not so sure if knowing that information was worth that much. Enormous bulls, worthy of real men. Oh, I need to equip the bag first. Let's see. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer insert. Good mailbox. The box seems happy. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And Saint G with the crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore. And best set mailbox also. I feel you, mail collection the box. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully, even so, do you. Aha, I can start collecting bottles. Let's go. Okay, let's head further south then. A gateway, a, a river, to, uh, a, little, a, little, a gateway to the river of filth. 
a helpline to the company which controls the drawbridge. Hello. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breastbone. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! Not so cool. Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer, you're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! I'm not cool, man. What? No. I can't believe you said that. You got personal style. You know what you like. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. Where are you from, Sealing? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about This man probably comes from Sea Guy, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samara Isola. From the Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Sea Guy archipelago was colonized by Revachon. Oh. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say that you're from uh, Sea Guy. Cool. I admire your awareness of our intertwined history. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism. But the Apricot Suzerainty is a shithole. That's why I left. Uh, but isn't it only a shithole because of Revachon? If you say so, officer. I don't worry too much about politics. I'm an entrepreneur, you know? Whatever is good for business is good for me. Zilang, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah. Tasty, tasty drugs. I'm super into drugs. That's very cool. A lot of the coolest detectives do drugs. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale. Or at my home, or on my person. He smiles. Well, we're looking for a lorry driver who is transporting drugs out of the harbor. Or he or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler. You investigating that and all. But uh, I am not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. But I don't know anything about that. But you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. So you forgot to tell me? Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Okay, stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operations at the harbor? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. He doesn't want to talk about them. He's afraid. Who are you afraid of, Silang? Look, there's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I've spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. If you don't want to get into this mess, you have to give us a reason to move on. Is she okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. Is the lady driver the old woman back there? The 
taste out strange? I don't know. Maybe if she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. It could be. She was strange. He's not ruling her out. Who are those other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Okay. Felix, we're cool now. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You yep. can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you. You deserve it. Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember. Hey. You know, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. But why, officer? After all this mess, the broken seals, lying to you, come on. Think of it as an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? Or you could not make this about corruption and go with something even wilder. <laughs> it's an investment in me. A highly experimental human being. The risk reward ratio I is insane. Hey. Than speculating in exotic derivatives. How much are we talking about here? Maybe 10 real? 10 real is a bargain for that kind of investment. You got it, my man. <laughs> Look around him. Thank you. There are clothes in. Don't be shy. These Save the economy. That sounds off. What are you talking Haven't about? You heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Why does this mouse make any Look fucking around, sense? Officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? I don't have children. I don't have children, Too I think. Bad, officer. You find your hands deep in tattered. Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand. Buy second hand. Keep no good. All you can come up with are some treated wool pants. No luck? Why not take another look, officer? Keep support. Hmm. We are here. You see two lowly, defeated speakers. I can see you have a taste for luxury, officer. A pair of those sneakers, mister. Only? That's madness. Fun, ultra. We're the future. These ones risk. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. What the about speakers the speakers, huh? Doesn't anyone want the speakers? Officer? These speakers are Samaran garbage. I'm ashamed to even use them for. Pro Samaran trash. That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the proletariat. Can't I just buy the sad, conquered Samaran speakers? No way. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low fi socialist junk. Yeah, that's why I want them. I think I might be low fi socialist junk myself. No, officer. You're a high class policeman who accepts nothing less than the best. Lucky for you, I've got the best on sale. You don't know what I am? I don't even know it myself. I want the well, speakers. If you want them, but see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers go? If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. Damn. So you have to buy the sneakers first. Damn. Damn, indeed. Hey, you never bought one. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses. You like sunglasses, officer? A boat. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously. No, you are definitely not buying those. 
Yeah, right. I guess Are that's you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through. These, those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, super much. No luck. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun. I hope not. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some. Re all right, let's leave for now. Thank you for the money. What air rise up from the sewer? Sour, acidic, and strangely comforting. More bottles. More bottles. No. Oh. New gloves. Royce Pawn Shop. Fast cash for fast times. Um, hello. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Well, sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting oh, you. No, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite a collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. Um, you might be able to do an investigation, I actually. It, but I can try and answer any questions. Do you know anything you about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad mm. for everyone. Well, I think you could help me get a corpse out of a tree. The corpse behind the hostel I show. I don't have a truck with a mounted platform or anything of that sort myself. Ask around the harbor. There might be some workers mm. there who'd be willing to help. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. By the way, do you happen to have any guns? Like the ones carried by the officers of the citizens' militia? Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh god, the lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. I sold you my gun? You... Uh... We've came here too. That just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol citizens' militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. Ah, uh, no, I need to, I need to fall through. I feel like there's something you're not telling you me. You weren't quiet yourself, officer. Could you tell me what I was like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and that you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. Very normal behavior. You must have been in great shape. I'm sorry you had to see me in that state. You don't have to talk about it any further. No apologies necessary, officer. 
Was du bei der Policeman, ja? She didn't seem like a policeman. Although she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interest in the gun a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and of her. Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? Miraculously. His face does not reveal what's happening inside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. This mess? He means your mess. With any ideas where I can find her? My apologies, officer. But I have no idea where she was coming from, or where she went. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. You just have to hope you luck upon the <sighs> At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something of else. Of course. Uh, something I'd like Let to sell. have a look. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Well, actually, let's let's not do that. Another time, perhaps. Okay, he definitely is high. Looking at his wares, talking to him, that a guarded man like him wouldn't tell you if you asked out loud. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copper type. They are copo yes. types? Guess what's yours? I'm sorry to okay. manage me. Just for the length of this short demonstration, please say something that isn't. I'm sorry. Guess. What is it? A sorry cop? Yes, sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. Okay, okay, but what are the other cop oh, types? You know, Apocalypse, Superstellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid shadow cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. But won't the other cop types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copo type from sorry to anything. Uh... I'm sorry. Of course you are. It's okay. That won't happen. Advanced race theory. Oh God. Everything is calm in the eye of the race storm. Your mind is lucid and bright. The mind-bending phylogenetics appear more distant and, to be fair, a little ridiculous. The great race mystery has cleared up. All that's left to do is verbalize your thoughts. Go and talk to Measurehead about your newly found insights. Dear God. Kick. 
cash it. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Huh? Yes. Buy something nice. This sounds off. You shouldn't trust this guy. Expect the knights on horseback. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks. The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Who are they? Franco Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. <laughs> you mean figurines? A long, long time ago. Let's inspect the blue uniforms. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They uh -huh. are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. This looks like a nay. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflaged. We saw the soldiers? Ah, those. Yes, they are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but children like the bright colors indiscriminately. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. It's meant to give people hope. Even we can do it. Maybe. He seems to have his own take on the conflict played out in perpetuity by these toys. Might be interesting to find out what it is. Everything you pick out seems faded, chipped, and sad, son. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented. They stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boom box that says Stereo 8 approved. This is you. Golden orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. Mysterious approved machine. Is the Harman Walshi W2, made in Vespa, designed in Seoul, plays all reel-to-reel -reel format, two millimeter, eight millimeter, twelve millimeter. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back twelve real. You sure it's all in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though, I don't really like music. That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? What? Well, do you not like music? What do you like then? The stuff I record myself. Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. But a street light. Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. Where did he get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. 
How much for the street lad? Seven hundred real. A bargain, I dare say. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? There's one just like that on every corner. The light has undergone three transformations, and every transformation, large or small, has a price tag. What do you mean transformations? Well, there are the cost of removal and rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. Okay, that checks out. Huh. Hello again. How can I help you? I think you've helped me enough for now. Uh, maybe we'll see each other later. Evening, officers. I, speaking of water locks, I'll be on the toilet for a moment. I'll be right back. Evening, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. First things first, what are you doing here, man on the waterlock? My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the waterlock. I'm keeping him company, and eating this salami. <laughs> From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and grey overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the wreckage on the waterlock and the salami. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? The man on the waterlock picks the skin of a slice of salami and takes a sizable bite. You know what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. You know what's further down there? Well, there's the fishing village. An abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed-out <laughs> ruins. 
can have some of it salami. Sure thing. Want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. Why not? The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. Thank you so much. Bye. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. We can yeah, pick probably. up where we left off tomorrow morning. I guess that is a good call from Kim there. It has indeed gotten quite late. Is the, is the fritter still open? It is. The tear machine stands. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Good girl. Hello again, officer. How are things? Oh, things are well, yeah, good, but it's really late now and you're still here. I'm a night hawk. What can I say? Odd. There's a little meanness in that smile. All right. Hello again, sweetie. Yes, Arthur. She won't judge you, no matter what you say. I'm right. Hope it's not too bad. You know where we are, right? We're in Revishal. That's right. In a hostel called the Whirling in Rags, to be precise. Mm, okay. Yes, and Revishal? How would I even be? I haven't speaking of history. You know what year it is. That's her relief is I mine. can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are precisely, sweetie? Revishal is what's called a zone of control, led by an alliance of it is quite disappointing. Oh dear. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Someone No. Of course. Alright, nothing new here. Can I help you? Let's not drink. Let's maybe just not drink. The door is closed. Still no answer. Okay. Nothing here. And never anything here. Well then, time to get back. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right. Sounds like a good idea. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy 
on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. He lights a cigarette. Didn't know you smoked, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. <laughs> How did you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit, below it all. Right then, dirty brief. Yes, it's been a long and even full day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. The body is still hanging from that tree, which is unfortunate. And there's still much to do at the crime scene. He is not particularly satisfied with your progress, but he doesn't want you to feel completely discouraged. Probably out of fear that you'll just give up and keep drinking. Welcome. I'll be in much better shape tomorrow. I look forward to that. As for the interviews, we weren't able to find the union leader, Everard Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We tried to interview the White Pan's rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard <laughs> prison 41 practice? It's part of the jam rock shuffle. It's impressive, especially for a man your age and in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. So what, are power, so what are powers exactly? The RCM. Quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Ravashu. The RCM's oh, primary shit. role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Ravashu. Wouldn't that be an easy power to yes, abuse? Although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station, officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station closely. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, how can you be sure the arrestee will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. When power calls you, you come, but power itself is it. We are permitted to use whatever force we deem necessary, even lethal. Have you killed anyone, Kim? Yes. The last time was four years ago. He says it matter-of-factly and moves on. He has internalized it well. It's just that, a fact, a self-contained past event. Have I killed anyone? That's an improbability. Perhaps even impossibility. I feel like I probably have. Prison 41 is known for a higher than average rate of police violence. He's not judging you. He's respectfully acknowledging the difficulty of working in your precinct. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts hmm. in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records. Which is why it's paramount to keep them. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government? Yes, the international community's mission in Ravachol, and the moral intern, more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, 
The moral intent leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. What is the Moral Intern? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. I didn't know. How would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. Who was Dolores Day? A historic figure, the author of the modern age. You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism mm. is too abstract for me. What's the symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. You like the moral lantern? Yes, I did, when I was younger. In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. That's another leitmotif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Uh, I have an opinion. Do you? We are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeoisie organization protecting bourgeoisie no. rights. We are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting the people of Revachol. That's the hand we were dealt. Without the MI, we would be common vigilantes. Hmm. I guess vigilantes are bad. Sadly, it is what we already are to the people of Martinez. Most of them, at least, especially the UNIF. Vigilantes. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. He looks at the roundabout. Thank you. No, let's not say anything. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. This soldier is the highlight of the day for me, he thinks. This little stick right here. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, you know. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company. Not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks. The jurisdictions of our two precincts. And the Jamrock and the GRIH? We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. Looks at the dark silhouette of an equestrian monument cutting into the night sky. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Night. Captain Ptolemy Price steps into the yard. A piebald horse waits by the motor carriage, chewing oats out of an oat bag. Seagulls fly overhead. The sky is black. Captain Price wears a black suit and a standard patrol coat as he mounts the horse to head home. Rows of houses on either side, hunching over the sidewalks. And Precinct 41, 
with its dome roof growing distant. Around him, the streets are silent. A kid on the corner waves at the captain as he takes the turn on Perdition and Mame. The horse neighs. The captain nods back. Thanks, kid, he thinks. He's grateful. I really hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Human. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Oh dear God. Uh, wait, let him review for now. Sheen cutters. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Use the chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. With the expression, the chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Yolo, three percent chance. Still not oh. happening. It won't come off that easy. Well, we tried. The fan stands still. The switch must be broken because nothing happens. The air in the room is starting to feel like vaporized urine. The window stands broken and it's you see some lights shimmering outside, but it's difficult to make out the outlines of the buildings below. D All right, let's go to bed. The bed is cold and not particularly empty. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. Oh, so I could actually continue the day for a bit now. Oh no, let's go to sleep. The bed is cold and not. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep... And then sleep doesn't come. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. I need a blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Maybe if I try rolling over. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Something to do yeah. with. What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. <laughs> oh, no. Let's, let's fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images Images start forming. Oh. Oh, 
It's too dark now. You can only head to the victim. childhood what is this what it says on the can Harry answer the question I don't remember nothing do you remember your wife's hand on your face hmm? do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth Was the rest of it that lived or you just stood there with one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick watching it go tell me where are your friends human beings have friends harry boy where the hell are yours i can get it all back no it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The pale and the useless. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. I thousand years of written history you really dropped the ball harry 4.6 billion people and you failed every single one of them you really fucked up seen you before no you haven't you're just sleep talking and the act is wearing thin, too. The spots on the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time, sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. No, no, I can't come back from this. You're not coming back from shit, thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours bumping into things and acting like a clown who are you kidding just trying to solve trying to solve this damn case You're okay trying to what i can't hear you this is just a word dream now jumbled up garbage the pictures are gone the bed rises to meet you a thin sleep-like state more glass than velvet grinding in your head so something is wrong sleep shouldn't be this bad this dry this unnourishing there's something wrong with your thoughts some kind of new type of hangover god there's another type oh yes party boy and it's worse than the one before just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. going buddy
What the hell was that? Oh, just a dream. You have ones like that all the time. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What the hell is going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Why is this happening? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. But what is speed? Speed is a potent central nervous system stimulant. It kept you propped up all day yesterday, despite your debilitating hangover. How else did you think you even got up from this floor? You got up from this floor because of a holy vow you made 16 years ago with me. To wake up exactly 7.30 every morning until the day you die. Don't be silly. There was no vow. You were high on speed. That was the only reason you got up. You can't detect without it. It's that simple. No, I can take this. I'm not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. No. You will be fired. No, that's a lie. I can do this without the speed. Half the town won't be dead. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. on the bathroom wall. closed. Still nothing. Oh. Well, things are going on today. Good morning. morning. Looks like we can get to work at once. The Union mess have turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. Do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. What do we need to talk to them? Everything points to the Dock Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him, the circumstances in Martinet, which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them, and it won't be easy. Mr. Man guarded all this about yesterday. I completely forgot that. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. There's so many of them. Maybe you should call in reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. 
Solving one murder isn't worth the conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Yeah, that's right. One wrong. more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Good. A power move. But aren't you curious? They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to... Morning, Garda. Can I help you? Okay. Hey, how's it going? Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. The yeah. lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Howdy, Lena. What's kicking? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. A faint smile tells you she appreciates the effort. But at the moment, her mind is on more serious matters. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into. What did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night, but they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. Oh no! I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Okay. So has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully, but you have more important things to worry about. More important than a missing expedition i don't know expeditions often lead to some what, what, what is this expedition your husband was on just some field work sweetie morel is a highly trained scientist he and his assistant gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect but they should have returned by now they were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps he said they'd be back on monday what could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could this be it? He's a scary person. Do you trust him? Oh, sweetie. It's nothing like that. Gary's as loyal as they come. Hmm. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Well, the water lock on the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? I really don't know. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. So, you're husband some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A crypto-zoologist, to be more precise. What is it? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. 
Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Elena, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptids you studied. Could you just tell me about a couple oh, of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Okay, Kim. Just one little cryptid, promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. Ooh, tough choice there. Is that a cryptid on the spin you gave me? Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half boar story, half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. Yes, War story. it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. With its saliva? Yes. It has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is kind of stupid. The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Oh, no, I didn't mean to imply that Saolites are inferior to us in many ways. You are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today. What about what's the most dangerous cryptid? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Right, okay. He nods approvingly. Hey, you tell me some more about morale. Oh dear, I'm not sure where to begin. Well, what does he look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but. <laughs> His eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. It's always a challenge to describe a person you know best in the world. <laughs> Let's try again. If I were to try to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and be One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less <laughs> obvious milestones even more somehow. Yeah, I kind of, kind of, kind of relate. What did you meet? Via dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he just divorced. We hit it off and, well, here we are. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. All right, I think I have all the information I need. Let's I move on. I hope I've been useful. Could you tell me something about the rare insect your husband is oh, looking for? sweetie, it's fascinating. I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. Good. I'm time for insect factor now. Let's talk about something else. Uh, of course, dear. That's all for now, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hey, how are you doing, girl? Let me handle this.
Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. Her entire character has shifted. This young woman is cold as ice. You're a gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him. But know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming. Nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Okay, but what do I want to talk to you and not Peters? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishol. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. I like that. Good stuff. Let's take it as a fifth. Armed up, racing. What are the union's plans? Look, a comedian. Do your job, ask your questions, then get... Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? Hmm. What are we going to do to you? <laughs> the union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. Uh -huh. Goddamn right it is. If anything, it is the RCM who do things to people. But we digress. Yeah. Good response. What's your role in all like this? I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you all have right. people? We'll talk to Titus then. Oh, you know. Just go. Oh, would you look at that? Hey, silly. Fuck this coon, okay? Kuno does. Conspicuous pile. Oh, what the hell is going on? Was that a way to the roof? 
The door is closed. Ah, but maybe what that door is for. Let's see. Alright. Let us get going for now. I want to finally make use of that stupid theory I had to learn. Good morning, how are you doing, Tommy? Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? You know the lady driver? I don't want to talk about that. Oh. I don't mean to pry, but I kind of need your help. Man, I was hoping business. it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. Tommy, I asked you who's conducting the drug trade yesterday. You said you didn't know. I said you do. I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. He still is. Hoping. It's just wishful thinking on his part. Not trickery. It's true. We would have caught a lie, but a kind heart is tricky. Bah. Emotional rhetoric. He knew something and he didn't share it with you. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? Can you describe Thank her God, to I me? I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. From me too. Now I see why. What does she look like? A youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. What color hair? Blue and violet. Dyed. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Then she may have dyed it again. You know when she did you know when she left? Damn, when I don't she left. Wanna... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person. I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. What do you mean, troubled? She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. Hmm. Interesting. I was told that everyone's afraid of her. I but heard not. the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me too. That she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her. More like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well... It looks like it did now. But we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Her mind? The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. Hmm. She leave her lorry behind when she came? Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. He's right. There are other options. The race man, for one. Hmm. The gray-haired woman. Maybe she knows something. Wait, this guy says they're friends. Then, acquaintances. And he's okay with others ratting her out. Push Tommy and it will break his heart. And his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals. If I was running out, you just don't want your hands dirty. Is that what Fine. I'm getting? I don't want to be a butcher. And I don't want to be a knight either. I just want to be a person who can sleep at night. A little fame wouldn't hurt too. Tommy, come on, put yourself in my shots. I need this for another investigation too, it's important. I can't blow it. You're not going to put a bullet in your head if you blow it, are you? Because she's on the edge, man. Imagine it. An explosion. Of stars. Goodbye world of men. Money. 
and machine. Now I want to help her. I'll drop the matter for now. Thank you, friend. Hey, Grandma. Got to disturb you again. The woman is still hunched over the railing. Her huh? What is it? What do you want? Are you the lady driver? Can you just call me a lady, Harry Fair. She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat it. No sort of a woman driver. Yeah, the only woman I can find. I'm here. not that either, Harry Fair. I've gone too far from it all to remember what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. And not the driver everyone is terrified of. I'm only terrifying to small children and to those who used to know me. Yeah, it's not her. Believe me. Who's the female driver I was told of? How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camioners sniffing around when I have my movies to go to? Is that long haul? The That's... big ones, the trucks. There's no women and men there. It's all just. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. In the background, a quiet song seeps from her cabin into the air. You don't hear any vocals. How would you be scary to the people who used to know you? Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. Hmm. Thank you. It's on you to know. Oh, sin. Something in her is pulling towards some unknown rest state. She twitches like a sleep kick. All right, back to the racist we go. Hello, Mr. Racist Man. Looking for something? I've been giving me the run around. First up, where's the lady driver? I don't know what you're talking about. First, you knew. Ceiling didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. He should be thankful for the tip. Then why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Evashel West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. So does Lady Driver does? No. He means la puta madre. A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock. Controls what is probably the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revershall West. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. Alright, I'll let him do this and I'll grab myself something to drink while he does. Yeah, him. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who'll do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. The lieutenant adopts a rodentine quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peony's job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Not bad at all. Look at him lurching. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Lorimen and Carter's Guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... 
He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Be careful. This man still got some fight in him by the looks of it. It won't be easy to break him. Let's go! <laughs> the main no, thing it. is to not overdo it. Even when you're trying to scare someone, the most important thing is how does it look on your resume? Why didn't you and me step outside for a little talk? What? What do you think we're doing right now, runt? We're outside talking. There's some kind of homo thing. Yeah, maybe it is. Okay, that's enough, detective. That's enough. Let's just go and ask Tommy, all right? We are wasting our time here. Yeah. There's still one more thing I want to... I don't want to hurt Tommy. Tommy's been super kind and cool to me this entire time. Yo, big guy. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Hey, Duff guy. You have some questions. Things are busy enough. You're going to waste less of my time? We'll see. The Hulkin man loses stark skepticism. Okay, nothing to talk about. Shadley. Hola, wandering man. Oh. <clears throat> Attempt number two at going through measurements. Hey, big guy. The unpromising race pupil returns. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. You pick up on something artificial in his tone, like he's putting on an act. This is unlike him. He is usually more himself. But you're all part of the union, aren't you? The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonese. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of Ah, oh, come on, man. Let's model it. What have you got against them? Mm -hmm. uh, fine. They have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant. No, I need Narcotics peddler. It's shameful. What do you mean? Find out for yourself. Endomorphic blub. Interesting. All right. Nothing else. Better some time since yesterday. I think I know what the race enigma is. And... Racecraft. It's what rich people want us to do where they get all the money. Look, babe. The rich man has humiliated and emasculated this couplet. He can only think in base materialist categories and feminine abstractions like money. 
rich man really fucked him over, Jean. Woman looks half bored. His rage is already played out on the stage of history as the grotesque tragedy of revolution. All it can accomplish now is impotent academic text and neurosyphilitic rock and roll melancholia. Impotent class warrior. I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. That's all I wanted. Very well. You may enter the door once. Our race conversation here has concluded. Finally. Let's go. second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials Actually, I wanna, I wanna try another. I wanna try another way. If I can get through with rejecting it, then I want to reject it in a better way, not the wishy-washy way I did now. The unpromising race pupil returns. I am. You pick up on something odd. The heart now leap. Mm -hmm. Find the interesting. And. Whatever you want it to be. It's a free association language exercise. Degenerate race uh, hero. Babe. When confronted with the harsh truth of his demise, the melancholic academician starts fiddling his own genitalia. <laughs> his bald spot betrays that he is a convulsive masturbator. That's disgusting, Jean. It is. Beneath the veneer of academic jargon, the liberal theorist is a beast, a sexual maniac. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's an interesting answer. The unpromising, right? I am the hard deep now leave me. Find the interesting. And. Confronted with the demise of his entire race, the bourgeois alcoholic degenerate folk. Yeah. yeah, okay. No winning against him. There is no winning unless I knock him out, which I am physically incapable of. The unpromising I You pick up on the. Oh, don't be vulgar. Mr. Claire is a man of vision. He looks toward the harbor, motionless. The tattoos on his face, like a and it's shit. Not me to the fucking harbor. Look, babe, the disco dancing degenerate has run out of cocaine to shoot into his arms. This has made him short. Coca has really fucked him over. Impotent subject of pop culture. I take pity on you. You clearly want very well. You may enter the door once. Finally.
Beep. 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 On second, it's an let's see what's the draw open hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara, and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are Let's getting go. blurred. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Well, let's look it at it. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Okay, now to do now with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Claire, probably. The head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Remember, Leo, Everard's all items on the list. The drawer slides shut. Hmm, Oscar. Medicine. La fume. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. 993. Nine, calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachal, 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy, how may I help you? What is this place? Video Revachal, it's a 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. You know me? No. I mean, do you know anything about this place? I don't me? know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. What did I call you? Maybe you called to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? Maybe, but I don't even know my name. If you need any further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Boyd Main. I can't help you over the phone. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left. Well, 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 and with that, we got into the harbor. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. The white rectangle of the Revachol Citizens Militia is clearly visible on its back. This is your cloak. You can feel it. Lieutenant? I think that's mine. Yes, it does bear the RCM insignia. And we are the only detectives in Martinez. Think I should get it? The service cloak issued to you by your station? Yes, yes I do. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingertips. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. <laughs> I 
And it looks better. Machines and quiescence. Three packs worth of cigarette butts. Bunch of bottles. Maybe I can collect the bottles. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. Let's search for a little something. Something to help the us out. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Kim, would you mind if I help myself to some meds? I'm not here to tell you what to do, detective. Let's switch the side effects. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, Sudden death, hair death, erectile malfunction, critical flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to la opera, inoperable joint disorder, total spinal collapse. Maybe this was a bad idea. Let's not take that. You stand and exit the so this is where Renee works. Gonna look around. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot over here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabinier uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memories. Why did you take that picture of Rene? I'm going to ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long Snow is quietly covering the numerous wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Did I do this? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Hmm. That's really sad. It must have been miserable. Yes, 
This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. Yep. White pine trees are printed onto the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Seems to control the large crane above. At Marsh. On. Arret. Off. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk. The crane places the container down. This crane was built with a purpose, which has now been fulfilled. Who can say? I can't see how that was worth the records, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. I mean, well, before we go, where I'm, what? Well, whale fjord, Arda. I am kind of confused about this house. Can I get inside of it? It is a dwarf door. Ah, that's... Okay, that's where I'm coming from. I see, I see, I see, okay. Then I guess we go down here and over here and over here and... Go for this direction first. The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. It smells like blood. I can't open that one. Industrial sized thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. Coffee. Banner, sex under the weight of rain and snow. White versus red. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick. It's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Muindi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? What's up with your people and scabs? I, mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Hmm, <laughs> hmm. Uh, 
What's in the container oh, over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Hmm. You're Leo, who wrote the note to make more banners. Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was it about the borscht? Oh, yes. I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Hmm. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Aha. Uh -huh. You know who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Hang on. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. He didn't actually understand what you meant. And now he's just nodding along. Where's everyone? The harbor's kind of empty. Most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. What kind of trouble did this Titus and his friends get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's you. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple friendly fellow. What did I actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hard ease. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Ronnie. Leo, what kind of fight do we get into? Kill Too him, late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. You do be oh, right. Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals. Ah, and that's, not. that's I just want bullshit. you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane. Everything is so pretty and red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike. The old man whistles and hums a jaunty tune to himself. Oh, I'm just making some sure, mister. About okay. yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Everett's right hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? Maybe it's the... Uh, the lorry lady? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewe Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. They're my real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here, and I'm always busy keeping... Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. This is Miss Beaufort you mentioned. Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. Ah, the gardener. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. 
real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Aww. Doctor Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. Law school? Could she be talking about the union fixer? A.K.A. the gardener. This is the union fixer, the gardener. Looks like it. I'm not sure what a fixer is, but she is a real nice girl. Smart as a whip, too. Telling the gardener you know her name might throw her off. Perhaps something to consider later. I'm also looking for the leader of the union, of the dog workers union. Oh, you know you who he is? Mr. Everhart, then. He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Everhart and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Oh, Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. Okay, thank you bye so bye much. Alright then. Perfect, thanks for the autosave. Time to meet the union leader. Actually, let's let's go to the Let's let's first take the detour. You gotta take the detour first. It's just common sense, isn't it? Beep 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 beep. Dum dum. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the. Lieutenant, there is something special about this container. Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe I can't tell the thing we should have asked for. Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? Maybe there's contraband in there. There may very well be, but we are not here to look for them. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to get the body down from the tree. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. No reply. Let's persuade the door to open. Why are you even trying to open the door? Oh, I almost did it! Oh, I almost did it! Ah, oh, it was so close! Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Using my body over my wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. God damn it. Alright, Mr. Union Leader, time for some questioning. That does not look like a Union Leader is supposed to look. That's a- Before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. You in charge of the dog walkers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Dubardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that. I rather stand, to be honest. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. I don't sit. It's kind of a thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. 
I see not. His multiple chins move like ocean waves. I too have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Ah, uh, well, I need to talk. My, what I'm strong at is talking, so I need to take this. Excellent, Mr. Dewar. I, I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Rivershall Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. You know, Gata. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. I'm good, actually. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. He crosses his arms onto sample midsection and sinks further into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. I'm afraid. I got this. Are you alright, Harry? You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Um. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Oh, fuck. Oh, I would really love to have more composure right now. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Everything's falling apart. This is not good. This is not good. I'm not about to cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this? Says you. Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Ah, 
Uh, actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I could use a glass of water. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy, honestly. I am. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Not gonna ask me, I got it. Honestly, I didn't want to bring it up, Harry. I heard you have become Measurehead's race pupil. I'm not a race pupil. Listen to some of. It was a tactic. I needed to get in somehow. It's not like I'm a racist now. Of course, Harry. Of course. You're not some kind of a fantastic racist now. And rest assured, no one's going to hear about it. No one's going to know what you did with race there, Harry. Your race bonanza is safe with me. Word of how racy it got will never leave Martin A. Oh my god, I hate him so anyway, much. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. You're a community leader. You should help your community out. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And, Jean, please take it easy with the race science. He's had enough of that. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you. You help him, Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. That's really my My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. No, it's fine. I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. 
Everard's large hands are covering the folder. No! But the look on his face. Oh, come on, a three and a one. That's so bad. You, Harry. <laughs> oh, Harry. Oh, wow. This is really something. I'm sure it's not that bad. At worst, he has an old RCM folder, and I very much doubt even that. So, how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume. Where'd you get the folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into, haha, you guys are so corrupt. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. What kind of cup does it say? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. Sorry? Yes. You seem to be, a lot of the time, but right now there's no reason to be. Let loose a little. Be you. Well, okay. You know anything about my family? A wife, a family? kid, or... Harry, you're not a family man. Okay. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Never mind the family. Family, Harry, is the most important thing in the world. That's like a of course, Harry, around. of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. I want, want to talk about that. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Aids. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you, like I'm helping you with the body. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Yes, that's what it's about. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. <sighs> Opened a few doors in my life, yeah. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. <laughs> This really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. He's got to the point. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. <laughs> Whose stars is oh, it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Why don't you open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. Okay, what do you so mean by weasel? Be a loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Can I get in the feeling you don't even know anything about anything? Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin A's. Fine, damn it. Uh, I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. Lexus fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Oh, okay, so what's in the container that's at your office? My dear Harry. There are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly... Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have a... Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. 
You should at least try it's to... Okay, Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. It wouldn't want to get stuck in here. Yeah, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Oh, God, he's so disgusting. I hate him. I hate everything about him. Why did I have to spend so much time with him? For the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. You're back before the cargo container. It and as it's always been, it's imp We're gonna get the store eventually. I could get down over here, but it doesn't work. Ah, wait, wait, that's, that's the, the behind the uh, garden of the, you know, the thingy. Okay, number one. Hey, oh, big man. The unpromising race pupil returns. I told totally you to help us get the body down from the tree. So it was. My unpromising race pupil entered the harbor and used my superior to give me orders. I salute your cunning and will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're so noble, Measure Head. There's a but. But. While I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of but, um, you. But what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hablu. Uh, measure head, why must it be so difficult? I need to go to the toilet, I'll be right back.
All right. If Kim believes it's a fair trade, then I guess it is. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. The woman's gaze follows Measure Head as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Apparently so. Cool. I like men with guns and power. I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah. Jean Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I know, I've seen enough of a dead body already. Look at you! RCM Renta Cops! Guarding that bridge like Evrot's lapdogs! Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale! And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? Shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Then the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. Hmm. All right, big guy. The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. There has been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep on. What you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. So, how'd you like a harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. Lamer Utopia. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right, you talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Everett said you have a key to a door. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Oh, you could tell me. Of course. I got you. You don't know anything. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. That's something about a weasel. It didn't sound like a local polar weasel, if you know what I mean. Polar weasel? Oh. I know what you mean. I'm pretty sure he's actually Occidental, though. So you're gonna be No, wait, this was, I what I said was racist. I didn't want to. Ah, goddammit. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everard. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. So not wages or pensions or... This stuff. They already covered. Shouldn't you be grateful, man? It's a lot more than most people have. Never grateful. Were we ever grateful, we'd have nothing. You fight for every piece. Hmm. A larger share would you like? All of it. 
However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board, so they could take part in the decision-making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. You're a communist? No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. The stuff you do align admirably well with the World Republic. Why not call yourself a communist? I have nothing against communists. They are honorable boyaderos. And they have good analysis. But my own code serves me well. If my code starts failing, a code can fail a man as well as a man can fail a code, then I will have to submit to a new one, which may well be communism. He knows who he is, firmly grounded, has no need to reinforce or elaborate his political identity to himself or others. And it sounds to me like you're a communist who thinks he isn't doing enough to call himself one. See, I am primarily a lazy person. He looks very amused, as if he's thinking about some private truck or mystery. The boss man Everett, what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does the boss in the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would it not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway, and moralism is the most corrupt of them all. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. You seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about a political situation. Sure, I've had the necessary free time. Fortunately, there's always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. The man sits on the railing his hands reaching far and wide, yet it feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be, an endless torrent of time. You got any idea who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? The Merc was hanged with a very specific type of cargo belt, one often used in heavy transport areas, for example, harbors. You know. What a thought! Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Oh. Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. What does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. To kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Oh no! YouTube Studio lost the connection again. Why would it do that?
Ah, finally, okay. We are back. We are so back. Good talking to you. To work, right to work. What was the stance on the woman? On the lynching, eh. wait, where's the, the jam mission? The jam mystery here. I know the lady drivers and where's the lorry? Ah, yes, I kind of had to talk to Tommy, which I didn't want to do though. The tear machine stands in the co your bottles club. Hey, you got enough money for the night. Let's go. Looking for something? I need more half light. What is half light? Half light, half light, half light. This one. Let the body take control, threaten people. Oh, yeah, I'm really bad at that. Hey, Tommy. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam. Man. What? But I told you she's my. Thank you for. Uh, man, I don't wanna. I don't wanna, Tommy. Oh, this is. This is annoying. <laughs> An earthquake. Maybe I see monster in this plaza. Surely I see monster did. Hey, Rene. <laughs> Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? I thought you got this. Yes, the Debardeur's union pays me to stand with you during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Why are you on a leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, sick it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <laughs> It's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. So who was working a shift that night? No one. The bus has been unmanned since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Why would it be mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiner's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated kingsman collecting there reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. So 
Such dependency only weakens the man further. Do or die, that is no middle ground. It's not charity. Not to me. There is a grimace of pain on the old soldier's face. Looks like he wants to add something, but can't find the words. Finally, his eyes light up and he says, Up there, I give it all I got. I earn my keep. But you're right, officer. There is no middle ground. It's do or die. Something about him has changed. He's calmer somehow. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. You looked happy. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Still. Anything else I can assist you with, officer? That's okay for now. Could you tell me more about this woman? Officer, Jean the Marie Bouillot, who is that? Oh, sweet Jenny. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Hello, elephant in on bale. I probably just completely butchered that. We're playing through some Disco Elysium and trying to be a more or less morally good guy right now. But we are failing every second step of the way. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. Oh, you both knew her. We knew her, all right. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was 16. They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. Yes, it actually is my first playthrough. I went in blind yesterday. I think the uh, watch should still be up on Twitch, but I've also uploaded it on my YouTube if you want to see it. And today is my second day of playing this game. I really love it so far. Although I was kind of bummed out with having to embrace racial theory since my character is all brains and no brawn and I somewhere to get through uh you know the 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 big uh the big guy <laughs> and then you stole her from me Ooh. well technically you stole her from me because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over a pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You. The tall veteran looks at you and nods. No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. Can I ask what happened to her? She died oh, really? <laughs> of pneumonia two weeks ago. Thank you ago. for saying that. <laughs> it was a quiet passage. Peaceful. But, but I think that's only during this stream. I'm planning on playing some uh, Omega Strikers later. And once I get into the ranked matches, there, I'll probably be a lot less relaxed and also sound a lot less relaxing. <laughs> but thank you for saying that anyway. Rene and I were both by her bedside when she... He pauses, searching for the right word. Died. No use oh. sugar coating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? Departed. Hmm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. The look in his eyes is happy and distant. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. That's a bit odd. Heck, technically, we're both still engaged to her. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. So just her with your fancy words and pastry. <laughs> his pastries. The man had cake he back when he was younger. You are still there falls silent and turns away thank you too for sharing of course officer memories are all we have left 
Oh man, how cool that the two of them are still bros that spend all of the day playing together even after uh, having such a complicated relationship with a girl. Oh, didn't notice this guy yet. They don't know me, no one knows me. <laughs> oh, just a drunk. Okay, never mind. I want to take a look at the corpse now. Hello again, sir. But I can also say hello there. He's got nothing to say. I see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. Is that a good one? Yes. Hello. She nods, her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Is she such a working class woman? Why isn't she working? What are you doing? Looking for something to read. She reverts her attention to a worn out paperback. Phenomenal. It is. What a good discussion. All right, time to take a look at the corpse. Oh, Kuno, you're looking down. You missed a good show before. A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was porno. By the way, kipped is a racial slur. Huh. You need to act decisively. It's Kuno. Use Kuno words. I don't want to say that, but I kind of feel like Kuno needs someone to teach him that. But I don't want to say that. Ah, uh, fuck it. Stop choking, Kuno! The faggot has got you in a chokehold. <laughs> Kuno is not fucking choking. Choked you out, man. So you right for using such reactionary shit. Like fuck you did. Kuno's gonna keep saying kipped forever now. Kipped, kipped, kipped. <coughs> he only gets too kipped out before he coughs. <laughs> shit. The fuck did you want anyway? You got your fuck bag down. Now let's talk normal shit. Oh, now you want a normal conversation, huh? Yes, yes. Kuno wants a normal conversation. Ask normal shit, please. Uh, I want to discuss the body with you again, Kuno. The fuck about it? Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How oh, come? Kuno's fucking's got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. What? Look at him. Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. What do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. He performs a kickoff on the imaginary helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Oh no, not the expensive armor. You threw it in the sea. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gates. What do you mean, troubadour? Yeah, cock in boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker came around talking about cows or some shit? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? Are you from a Nordic country? Uh, almost. I'm actually from Germany. Did my accent give it away? So yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep of Kuro's armor. Go to the gate. Ask him yourself. I guess I need to brush up on my English lessons then. In school, we're always taught to speak in the Queen's and in a very British English. But I guess since I spent most of my days not speaking English, especially about... Actually, Mrs. Perfect. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> but I think we Germans always have a tendency to not properly pronounce like the the s's and the v, the the z, like the t and h. Never <laughs> mind anyway. Ah, I bet your English isn't bad too. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? You're just telling me just out of the kindness of your heart, Kuno. Yeah, Kuno's doing charity today. Kuno day. Kuno feels sorry for you two loser pigs. Kuno's doing pity now. Still, seems suspicious. He may have it in for that guy. Or you may be paranoid. That is also a possibility, sire. There are contusions all over his body. Did you do it? Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He grabs his head like it's suddenly hurting. He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. <laughs> a contusion is a bruise. Bruce, I'm talking about the marks your stones left on the corpse. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. He's thinking the kid has amassed quite the vocabulary of law enforcement terms, but he's not going to stick his nose into this. Me and my partner are wondering, where did you pick up so many police terms? Me and my partner are wondering, do you guys puff Peter? Kuno erupts into laughter, pointing his finger at you, then Kim, then back at you. An unfortunate choice of words, the lieutenant from Precinct 57 thinks. He looks at the harbor walls looming overhead. He could use a cigarette right about now. Ah. Ah. Oh, uh, I, I didn't even, I didn't even get that. That partner could be an innuendo here. All right, Your let's talk about something else. Get lost. I have some more questions about the crime scene. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? The Deadman's clothes were in the trash container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know. It could be a lead in the investigation. Someone may have tampered with the murder scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. <laughs> okay. No, Kuno, you don't know anything about tampering and investigating. And I already have pants. Whatever. Kuno was trying to help you. But you're too fat for fun anyway, pig. There was also a mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Yes, this is racist muck of anything yeah. to do with it. Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you pigs are after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? <laughs> For me, Germany is a naughty country. Being Italian. Hey, hey. Uh, I guess, I guess it is now for you, yeah. That's why I said almost. <laughs> but I've never been further north than uh, Dusseldorf, so... No, no, I've been to... Never mind, I, I've been to northern Germany once, so I've actually been in the uh, North Sea once. But I've never been more further north than that. He's saying he picks up the motherfucker because he's the closest. I can't hear you, Kuno! Speak louder, Kuno! That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tempered with the crime. Uh, with the crime scene. Clean some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. He likes putting two and two together here. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno. F yeah, get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo. Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. Letter, you ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you would say that the letter is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! 
Yeah, I'm from Bavaria. Currently I'm living in Munich and studying there. But I'm originally from Franconia, which is... This is very important actually, now that you mention it. Let's let's pause the game for a moment there. <coughs> um, there's like two countries in the south of Germany. One's uh, Baden-Württemberg, the other's Bavaria. But Baden-Württemberg, as the name implies, it's like uh, two groups of people and or two countries that got smashed together into one state, which is Baden and Württemberg. And Bavaria is actually also two states. The upper, the about the northern half is basically just Franconia, and the southern half is Bavaria. But since the state is only called Bavaria, all of the people within it are also called Bavarian, which is actually the highest insult you could ever um, give someone that is from Franconia, since there's a bit of a uh, historic rivalry. But I'm sure the very similar rivalries exist in uh, Italy. I heard, for example, that between, what is it, uh, Naples and some other city, some, some other bigger city, there's a lot of strife about who's got a better pizza. But I only got uh, very surface level knowledge, so I don't know more than that. What's in the greenhouse over there, Kuno? Don't know. Kip das Garden, they used to work there. Kipt is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Airy Oppergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the Airy Oppergeits of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Hold on. The gardener used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. <laughs> Shit, nothing to Kuno. <laughs> everyone hates everyone in Italy. <laughs> Oh no, is it that bad? <laughs> Only been in Italy uh, once after we, me and my friends finished uh, high school. We took a little trip to, I forgot the name, it's like a city on the coast near uh, Venice. But uh, I think the people there hated the tourists much more than they hated each other. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, w I would have to ask a friend of mine who organized the trip for us, but I don't remember the name of the city. The gardener? She's actually not a gardener. Turns out she's a union fixer. What the fuck does this have to do with the Kuno? Kuno doesn't give a shit who she is. Uh, I think it's. I think it was south of Venice. We took a ferry that went to that, that drove to the north to get to Venice at one point. But I think I, I think I think we went through Ravenna to get there. Kuno, there's a stack of Eternite back there. Point to the shack. Oh wait, do I want to tell him that? Ah, sure, why not? That's just some shit. Roofing gimps left behind. Lazy dinks. There it is. That strange feeling again, as if there was more than meets the eye about that pile of roofing material. I don't know, man. I, I I don't know which city it was. You know what? I'll I'll ask my friend and I'll I'll have I'll have it figured out the next time I stream. And if you come visit, then I'll tell you. <laughs> you can't hide it. I see you without vision with my inner eye. Inner eye? Fuck are you talking about? Ask me a normal question, pig. <laughs> They're trying to make you feel stupid, Kuno. You glance again at the roofing material in front of the shack. Yes, you should go back there. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't fucking care. What I'm studying? I think I'd rather keep it a secret for the for security reasons. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Hey, it's down. Let's Mr. go. Mr. Major Head has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. I want more MP5. 
Puffy. A field autopsy. Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. Language is meh. Bro, I'm since since I'm a I'm a huge weeb, I've been studying I've also been learning Japanese ever since I started at university, like on the side, since my university has some programs for that. And learning Japanese had has made me appreciate the fact that I'm a German native speaker so much because if I wasn't, I don't think I would ever in my lifetime be able to learn German. Our, our language is so fucked in so many aspects. Like just the articles and that every single word has a randomly ascribed gender. For, for some reason, tables are male, but chairs are also male. However, the... Uh, like a knife, for example, that's neutral. I mean, at least it's pronounced the way it's written. At least that. At least that. But it is also kind of fucky. <laughs> the RCM's four-phase murder scene processing manual. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up! Uh, da -da. Uh. Can we have someone else for this? Like a doctor? No. You and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From autopsy to clean up, to social work, everything. Yeah, I really feel like a detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Ah, finally, I can ask again. Dead man, tell me who you are. I'm gone. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question for Go you. Go ahead, Cobo. What the hell is happening right now? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Like, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Let's go! We sh with schizophrenia, we windows. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you! Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a cop -rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, cop rooney, -rooney. <laughs> This is getting a B now. Is my name Rooney? <laughs> Fuck no. You're no Rooney. I do strike myself as a Rooney. <laughs> no, you don't. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. Yeah, that's also what the, uh, the fat guy from the union said. That's right. Stupid, boring Harry. Harry... The motherfucker. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you, Hanged Man? Love did me in Brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless, looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? This is all I have. I am all you have. Then you truly lost it all, brother. 
Let the world drag it all away from you. And what it left, you pissed away. And here we are. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. So you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? A what? Captain Copadromo. I fear we are drifting away. Fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. He didn't choke himself. You know it. Enough. Come back later, Copo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. You can come back and look into his face anytime you want. Oh no, yeah, uh, ah, that the text that's displayed in the one, the text that you just narrated were different, huh? Okay, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, Corpus Windy, is the world's highest summit. And the failure of the 38th single, Epui de Saint, to crack the top 20, was the death knell of disco. But what a field autopsy is, you have no idea. Uh, let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. What do you mean? I mean when I need you to. Until then, I should handle physical contact and you should take notes. We just fold this in, right? That's right. You knew it because you inspected your ledger. The lieutenant is relieved you know the protocol. Ooh. All right, the let's go. The stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with Number one, assistant. That's you. Eddie Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... I love it. Before I went to Munich for studying, I've lived in a super small vi village a bit further in the north, with no bus station, no supermarket, no cinemas, no nothing. You had to get on your car and drive for at least 20 minutes to get to the nearest train station. And now that I live in Munich, I can reach pretty much every single place I ever dreamed of by bicycle. And that is just the most freeing experience of my life. But it is very loud, no matter the time, that, which is a bit of a drawback, but I'm fine with that. Number two, Corona's case, no. KK57-0803.0815. Write it down. Number three, the name. NA. Next. Number four, date of birth. NA. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Roughly 50. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Number six, race. Mondial. Fair to olive skin from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other. Number seven, sex. <laughs> fucky, fucky! <laughs> this is a serious moment, Kuno S. This is very dramatic and very serious. We're looking at a dead guy. <laughs> Male. Male. Ha! 
have sex? Right, male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Number eight, date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. What else? Nine, body identified by is non applicable. Ten, case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. A strange word. Treatment. What is treatment? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. Hmm. I'm not so sure. Ah, fuck it. What's next? He places his gloved hand on the dead man's chest, as if in preparation. Your central mm -hmm. nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, like drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Crudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches, to make sure she is dead more than anything else. And so, all across Jamrock, Cole City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today. 42 stations of breath. Damn. We should start the post-mortem. On the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. External examination summary. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. He turns the body onto its side. Check the underwear label. <gasps> see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Write it down. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.1000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings, to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene, using a triggered mini. The deceit has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, 3 meters. There is a buckle on the other end, well-nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters, generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness, Hair is combed back, short. The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch, wet. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? <laughs> you think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was. Fucking Max! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest. Consistent with predation. 
exactly get your mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. The while it's obvious, the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. If we got these... Wait, the rubber grip cutters? Uh, 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 pet the hanged cutters? man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Always good to think ahead. Now... We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pigs are boring. Oh no. Fuck. Let's look for a good spot the belt to cut. The is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. <gasps> That's 70%. Oh no. Oh no. Kim, are you sure that you're not the one that wants to be do doing this? Not your pig, Kuno. You are? You're Kuno's pig? Concentrate on the belt. Not on who is whose pig. There is no pig. There is there no pig. There are only the chain cutters and the belt. Well, 70%. Let's roll the dice. You are this pig. Being Kuno's pig has a steady effect on your hand. <laughs> Go with the flow, man. Okay, 28%. Rolling the dice. You jam the cutters right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. So yes, close. Somewhere so close. there. Already they're buried deep in the man's flesh. Then you rotate them to get a better hold. Then... Yeah! Fuck him! Fuck that faggot here! Corpse fucking time! Told you my pig was hardcore! I should have a go first. I think I have a strategy. Thank you, Kim. He sinks the cutters into the knot, preparing to perform the cuts, with his elbow to his knee, for precision. Snap! The knot is slashed. Another cut, and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. Mm, yeah. yummy. He hands you the chain cutter's back and then kneels closer to the body, running his fingers along the dark red groove until he comes to a gap. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck, on the nape. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> Let's get up and see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for, ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Does it look like he was enjoying his moment of death? Ah, yes. Your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. Yeah, processing. Science. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Just write down that we request an analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Write it down, at Back is sample. symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Last item, hands. He takes the, man the man's right hand in his, inspects it, and moves on to the other hand. Let Lieutenant Brooklyn. Hands are clean. No sign of a recent struggle. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Working so close to the fumes coming from the corpse must be hard. You realize suddenly that the lieutenant has been barely keeping it together. 
these past two items. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal examination. Summary. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course. There is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. The brain is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. Thank you for lightening his mood. It's hard down there. All right, Annie. Good. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Oh. Gently, a oh, rotting no. smell erupts oh, from the no. mouth. Purge no, fluid no. runs down his lips, black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. A conch, the siphon prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. Alright, N.A. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. We already have one test, as per regulation. And we already requested semen. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal? I'm not even interested in these boring mulkers anymore. I haven't sucked him off for anything. Yeah, better to leave it at that. Oh, no. Leave it NA, then. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. <laughs> Write it down, omit the voila. What's next on the list? Number three, description of injuries. Summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. What about the injuries we have inflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? Uh, sorry, I have inflicted. Okay, so there's an incision on the thorax from a chain cutter. I wouldn't mention it. Better not to muddy the waters. Right, back to injuries. Injuries. Bite marks. Head, chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Non-fatal. Post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury. Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. Velocity, has confessed to causing it at maximum <laughs> velocity. The lieutenant's admission has caused great gratitude in Kuno. 
he is silent with it. Let's write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man beneath the description non -fatal of the mortal. Injury. Right. Next. Ligature mark. Oh, actually, before I say that, what's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. All right. Number three, ligature mark. Oh, I can turn the page back. The right? corpse lay slouched to the side, oblivious to its surroundings. All right. Okay. Bite marks, contusions on the head, Finish and dark the red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Right below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. What's really confusing me, or what I think is really suspicious, is the fact that we're gonna go. All right, then. Thank you for being here for so long. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye bye. Yeah, you too. What's really, what I think is really suspicious is the fact that there are no, no signs of clawing on the neck, as if he didn't, as if he wasn't defending himself after being hang, hung, which could either mean he was already dead or he just died immediately. For example, if he was dropped with the rope around his neck by his neck snapping. But then we would have seen it as bone damage. So I feel like it's a non-fatal injury. And since we now also know that there is a girl around who seems to be dangerous, and this man was apparently very horny when he died, I have a feeling that he may have been killed by the girl while doing something that adults do, and then was hung only later. The lieutenant falls silent abruptly. He is deep in thought, eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. Why did you say that? I don't think it was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Why weren't his hands tied? A big man like this, I would tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. He produces a small black plastic roll from his jacket, a body bag. Uh, first, how did it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We requested a test to be run on the genitals, but was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. No. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. We got a copy of the autopsy pages. For processing. He looks at the dead man one more time. Then at the slip of red paper in his hand. Then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Shoot, loony Rony. Uh, maybe he can tell me something. Why do I feel like I've forgotten because something? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in Brother Copo. It was love all along. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. It's a mishmash, Copa Bolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how... Well, I'm not from Messina, am I? My hair is too light a shade of brown. Trust your inner racist. Are you racist, no You think I am. 
You think I was a racist because this lump looks military and has tattoos. That's called profiling. I know what this means. More questions. Maybe I was getting it's a mishmash, Coppa Bolo. Are you from Messina? No. My hair is too light. Okay. You think I am. You think I do I look like an erotic auto asphyxiation type to you? Yeah. Captain Coppadromo. He didn't choke himself. You know it. He's thinking your body. Mind you. A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. A baby affected with Harlequinism. You sure I got out of that one? Coppolini. Ah, I know. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. Your arm reaches out and your eyes close. Oh, as let's if go! By their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, dead flesh through the latex glove. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. Everything is silent all around. What do you think? Crawl up his nostrils? They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers on his nose. Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. What is he doing? Hear a voice squeak. It sounds very far away. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Call out, spider. Put your finger in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. I move it. This feels right. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, fragile, even through the latex. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Here we go. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Kuno nods too. He takes a step closer. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth. Right into his brain stem. What the fuck is happening? Ah, oh, shit, see? Instant. Yes, that's what this part is called. Go around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wake. Push deeper. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The onulations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There's a cavity cut between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Fucking cavity, see? 
Gunas voice is hushed. Quivering with awe. One last time, push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't uh, wide Ah, let's enough. wriggle so in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. A solid, a solid object right under can the skull. You, can you get to it? Maybe. There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. Forget about the fucking exit wound, Bino. The pig is wearing him. Her voice is absolutely sizzling with excitement. All right. Fish it out. And? You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... I got it. My pig fucking got it? He's watching his old man get the big prize at the claw game. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. Fucking beautiful! A bullet. The bullet God. falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non caliber rifle, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Can I have it? Of course, you deserve it. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four, oval entry wound with an abrasion collar, soft palate, Back of mouth, high velocity, temporary cavity in brain tissue, small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds about right. Opinion, fatal injury. Yeah. Got that and much. one last thing, we can now fill in injury number three, ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal, post-mortem, treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death, and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Ligament mark, the fractured head bone, it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Think so? I did not just come up with this. I've had my doubts since you told me about that hunch, officer. Him doing something else when he died. I don't have intuition. I don't usually trust it. But it made me doubt. There have been other signs too. Small thing. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death. As the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do Who this? something? The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. 
think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling in Rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. What happens next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. Be gone? What should I do in the meanwhile? Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. The word lingers in the air of the yard. Far away, dogs are barking. Further yet, the sound of motor traffic. Let's go, we found the bullet. Detective. <laughs> and we're a detective. After you bag the corpse, Lieutenant Kitsuragi will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks and even the main case, but it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. I I don't know if I want the shoes. I feel like I want to have the shoes. But I don't think he'll let me just take them while he's here, right? Rigorous oh. self critique. Right, I had a big breakthrough. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. These are Punk. not flights of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And, above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you, all the love and patience of your friends, you drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win, and it will keep on winning till you die, or overcome it. Yep. So much for a quiet smoke. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like a creature. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. But can I also do so by putting on the glasses? There are several footprints oh, in the mud. Oh, I can't, okay. Siege. All right. That was quite something. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny... Okay, let's let's check that out in the evening, where before I'm going to send him off to bed. Necromancer pig! That shit was dark! Going in there like that! Oh, brutal shit! Tell me, Kuno dies. You gonna pick one out of his brain like that too? <laughs> Kuna's gonna go out in a hail of bullets. Gonna look like a fucking porcupine. Porta Rosa, a side alley of the Boogie Street Spearhead. A young man in his early twenties approaches patrol officer Emil Mullins and asks for a cigarette. As officer Mullins reaches in his coat pocket for the pack of Astra he just purchased this morning, the man shoots him point blank in his chest. Breathless, the patrol officer collapses in the gutter. His right hand is grabbing the armor on his chest. The bullet didn't pierce it, but he can't breathe. On the pavement, the patter of the perpetrator's feet growing distant. Bleed, pig. Someone opens a window and says, but Emil cannot see who. His sight grows dim with pain. I'll be there for you, Kuna. Yeah. All right, 
think it's time for us to finally find out what's wrong with Kuno. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Interesting how. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something. Something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Kuno. What the fuck are you whispering about? He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. What the fuck are you whispering about? She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. What's up? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is difficult. This is very difficult. Uh, it's horrifying. It's terrifying. Crazy. Scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. You tell her, Kuno. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. You mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. He's meant everything he said before, but right now, he not only means it, he is sincere. And she's too small to have a person. Are you one. getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Many, many. Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just... Run in his mouth. Kuno stupid. A cop would be too large for her to overpower. But a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable. The elderly. The homeless. Or other... Other children. Other children. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. You said she's insane. Yeah. She's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho cap in and shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you... And he doesn't even want to think about it. This isn't just another boast. Kuno, do you think it's possible that she killed other children? Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Kuno, there, that's it. That's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah. Think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Who were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. So long as she is. Napa Kimpi, the guy. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. People. Crazy people. <laughs> Fucking knackies. I don't know. Sounds boreal. Like something from the tundra and tiger covered cutler, Isola. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. The red people? You mean evil little red haired people like her? 
Yes, they do. The Suruese have that ginger gene. Suruese? Like that man from Shalom doll shit? She could be. Revelshaw does have a small Suruese community. Or she climbed into a yakberry. Is she not your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in like a mad yeah? stray. She was just there. What was that, Tino? She was in the hallway, dripping wet by the fucking shoe rack in the dark. What was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days in the corner every time Kuno went out. Said she got in. How? Oh. I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk under a pile of clothes like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S? She fucking looks like Kuno. No one knows know her name. name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. What are you dealing with all of this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you. Kuno's got this shit under control. You need backup? I'm here for you. Listen! Listen! C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You this is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take it. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her. Sneak up on you later and fuck you up. You understand? The boy looks in the eyes. Black pupils trying to focus. I can respect that. All right. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. Oh, don't look him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig cooker. And shit. You can even fuck back in Kuno's kingdom. Kuno saw you sniff around that fucking pile of eaten ice. It's a secret door, okay? Just pull it off and fuck back in there. What was that about running you an errand and dealing with Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets problem is. Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Mm, okay, dirty okay. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Who's your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? In your condition? This is what's okay. going to happen. Kuno's listening. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Revachon. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Kuno's violent dad's got Kuno's key. So you need to fuck your way in there. Go to the pier side. Bang on the door till the cleaning gimp lets you in. That's how Kuno does it. Then you go to room 12 and kick down the door. Police violence style. That's what Kuno does. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Come on, Kim. Okay, then. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Thank you so much, Kuno.
Damn. This game is insane. It's the woman lover. Jeez. How can I reach the Maybe, maybe, maybe through. The pile of Etonite looks stranger now that Kuno told you about his. Because, unless Kuno lied, there it is. You see a shabby little door. <laughs> So this is the Shakuno man. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. How see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Uh -huh. oh, no. Now I can go along here. Restoration pills are considered burned. Ah, this is where I am now. Postcard. second way in in case we don't want to use the main entrance for what why is it so loud in case we don't want to use the main entrance that's helpful Oh yeah, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do in here. Number uno. Hey, Mr. Cook. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Do you know what's behind the door? He looks up at you, then looks away quickly. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. You said you're friends with Manan, is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He's smart, their friends. What is the posh you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his, and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. <laughs> Mercury rising. Horse hmm. need more vodka? 
Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka, boys! I love it, Bratan! <laughs> Turn it the fuck up and then... Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. No vodka. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. You see a heavy steel door. That is number one, number two. Here you go. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? You Lizzie? Uh, Elizabeth Miss Buford. I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Easy. Leo told me about him. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. A man like Easy Leo could have said anything. Do not be restrained, sire. He said Mr. Edward sent to law school. I represent the Union and these men here. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. I said even though you caught her off guard you are you said the a man like easy Leo could have said anything do not be restrained sire but you are in debt to mr Claire I represent the union and a very much I said even though you caught her off you are not you said the a man like easy Leo could have said anything do not be he said you mr Edwards do a sucre death machine no such thing this isn't about me. Calm down, everyone. Let's stay professional. Dirty tactics, officer. I said, even if you caught her off, you are not. You said a man like Easy Leo. I am a legal counsel. Don't a very minor. I said, even if you caught her, you are not. You said a man like Easy Leo. He said no such thing. Calm down, everybody. Dirty tactics, officer. What if what I wanted to interview you? No significance of oh, yes, no, mm. So you were spying on us? Listen. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Let's. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Rota. Evening falls. The time. The vows are blurred and flesh. Lower intestine. The term is metabolic fascism, Rota. You're going to keep your vues, right? Keep your vues, Brota. Absolutely not. I'm not going to be played by an upset stomach. There's a slow, painful growl. So it is one of betray. <laughs> Game trying to turn me into a fascist. Job attacked. <gasps> All right, Titus. This is where you say you're fit. A bit. Yeah, well, I will say my bit. Precinct 57's finest scans the room, leaving the speaking to you. He trusts you. Maybe against his better judgment, but he does. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or some? The boss man's talking to you. Do not let their squeals disturb your serenity. These are but simple peasants, sire. 
God, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? <laughs> hey, asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. We need to talk about the man hanging the back. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. You must really like cleaning up other people's shit. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first-degree murder. Ask if it was them. No, no, no. I was here. You got business with my boy. He understood what you were doing. Now watch the other guys fuck it up by falling out of line. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Shout to the scrawny red-faced men. Two teeth missing in the front. Yes. Falling out of line to please him. This is the best kind. And now this guy is going to... Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. Says the 40-something man from the corner. With a plectrum hanging from his neck. Use it to take a dig at his friend. Floodgates open. Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. You notice know, gang tattoos. The man must be either Mescos or a Miserin. This one knows how to keep things going. He's a hothead, but not one to be taken lightly. The last one is a bit of a black sheep. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already got a pretty good picture of these guys. You can use this. What can you use it for? You could take another look at the tracks in the yard. See if they fit with the characters here. It could be incriminating. Several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six. Wow, still not doing it. You're bad at this. Maybe you keep failing because you suck. All right, I need more visual calculus. Then let's get more fucking visual calculus. Pop it up. Wait. I got two levels. Let's go with one first. There are several footprints in the mud. Left. Wow. Still not. What else is there? To right. Again. There are several footprints in the mud. Left well. Oh, come Still on! Do it. You're bad at this. Don't beat yourself down. Neither can I. We'll have another look later. Nah, nah, that's bullshit. Come on now. I've got nothing to say. Lizzie? Even you caught her off guard. You are not. You said a man like Easy Leo could have. He said no such thing. Calm down. Man. Dirty tactics, officer. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. No, no. When the blurred and fascism, Brota, you're going to keep your. There's a slow. It is one of the. Hello. This is where you say again. Bit. My bit. 
All right, then. Let's say my bit. Detective. Precinct 57. Hey, do not look. What? Is he fucking kidding? This guy. Hey, asshole. We are looking for Titus Hardy. We need to talk about the man in Oh, pick. you should. Oh, he was a fucking. You might want to start asking your. These guys are so. No, no, no. He understood what you. Now watch the other guy. Yeah. Yes. Relax, Dan. Use it. Yeah, Dan. Let Dennis enjoy his. This one. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, fellas. Too late. You already got a pretty good picture. You could take another look at the tracks in the yard. I'm going to do that for now. All right, that's working wonderful. I am a master detective after all. There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. Let's the go over them one by one. one. Standard work boots. Steel reinforced toes, number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy, the one with the ball cap on his head. Interesting. They didn't even bother to change boots, putting them on the scene. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the... Five, another standard work boot, reinforced toes, number 44. Same as before, either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six, light as air. Same make of boot, but number 41. Small like a rat, shanky. Should've got this earlier. Than never detected I can't rest. The glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? And Eight. the last one. Another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? A leader like Titus doesn't let one of his guys out of sight easily, especially at a time like this. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. And the red face one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. I want 200 kilograms. 200. This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a... He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Probably, yes. This would also fit with the victim being dead from a previous gunshot wound. They had to carry him because he could no longer walk. Is there anything else that's not worth you here? Um, light I'm step, that's the probably step. not. Maybe you're right and it's someone else. Although uh, I don't. An aberration. One soul is smoother than the others. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy boy. Wonder who he is. You have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor? Or maybe a drummer? He regrets it the moment he says it. I don't know why I said that. We are not looking for a drummer. <laughs> we are looking for a group of dock workers. 
The lieutenant clearly appreciates the chance to clear up the drummer issue himself. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Mm. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yeah, prudent. Mm -hmm. How old do you think this checks out? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to... It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shot then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. But we know the victim had a bullet in his head. A more precise way to put it is, it was made to look like a lynching. We've been purposefully misled. Huh? By these tracks? Yes. Alright. That seems super helpful. And I need to go to the toilet. Super go to the toilet. Be right back. Ready. Let's continue on. Hello, Tito. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. On eight sets of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, Madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us, and we're all here. He sizes you up. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking, and we think she could maybe. This person Glenn wants to hire. He really respects her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. <laughs> Nothing to do with your <laughs> shit. Uh, I cut you by the balls, Titus. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you 
don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. Learn back it. You do it. The pretty boy. You guys real funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Let's put a container belt around the dead man's neck. Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yeah, what? Because we took it from the harbor where we work. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. The game's over, we got no, the perfect leader. Don't. What you have is seven honest men who thought it forthcoming to tell you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. How does the boldness head factor into this? Huh? There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. Interesting, sire. It's as if he's lying to protect someone. He's not very good at it. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. This was a good move. Also, notice how Titus doesn't like her much. Especially when she's calling the shots. Call the shots for then. Who mm. called the shots for Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here, Titus? Who do you fucking think does? What she did? It wasn't a question, dickwad. How fucking stupid are you? This asshole is worse than... Titus runs the Hardy Boys, genius. That's why we're called the Hardy Boys. Ain't that right, fellas? I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. Yes, there are some administrative differences. But on that night, they all acted as one man. Are you deaf? Do you think you... A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. <laughs> Who do you fucking think does? See, I told you, boy. The one is missing. Hi, this big dick. No one was thinking... That there's any question who's the leader. That's how he would have ended it. Titus won't let him. No. 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 Fuck no! The big dick is right here, asshole. You're looking at it. Right. <laughs> Fucking here. He grabs the scratch. Disregard the outburst, officer. None of the boys have any comments on their power relations. That night they acted as one. That's all. Why did you kill him? Why? Cause he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. He's a mercenary? That's it? I am. He stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. ex oranese special forces. A live grenade! Right here, in our bar! 
This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here. How do you know he wasn't special forces? One night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm on our knees, goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Arnie's paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Sire, the tale is true. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape to harassment to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid karaoke right there on the stage he grabbed someone yeah this girl's on the mic a beautiful girl young gets into the second verse of lover lake the fucker grabs her legs starts screaming show me your cunt why don't you show me your cunt then he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle doesn't even fall down this is the same girl who was sexually assaulted raped you said Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? There's something odd here. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Who did he rape them? This is a very serious no. allegation. You're not getting a name. That's a Martin A's matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Despite the stone warning, you can slip one more question in. I'm going to ask for one Sam. Who did the man rape? Titus, do not answer. You have been forthcoming enough. Fuck off, Carl. She's gone through enough without you harassing her too. She doesn't need more embarrassment. What are you talking about? Embarrassment. If someone has been sexually assaulted, we need to... What you need is to get the fuck out of my face. I've had enough of explaining myself to you fucks. He's dead. It's done. As you can see, these men can only take so much baseless scrutiny. I'm doing my best to keep the situation civil, but... It's true. She was the only thing holding him. Why don't I just arrest you then? Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood? By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. Easy. Walk back from the provocation. They're armed, and they outnumber us. The lieutenant tries to establish eye contact with you. All right, easy now. Let's just talk. Wise move. You made the right choice there. Now How do I leave? Another one and get the fuck out of our booth. With How many people have you sent to the shade? Shay's electric is the man. Or send them to reunion to rot for 20 years for life. What's that? The River Esperance Correctional Facility, a military prison run by the coalition, dubbed Reunion by the inmates. Oh, so you are just a simple, well meaning man, eh? Ever been in solitary? Prison is a charter. That's what it is. He's clearly been in solitary confinement. So is hanging a man slowly without breaking his neck. So. <sighs> What are you saying, Excellent? You don't have to keep answering his. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. 
Seemed like a good way to How long had you known the victim? Him? We yeah! Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. <sighs> oh, what are you going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first degree murder. Even if it is a group response. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're rent a cop? So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Still haven't explained the bullet. You still on about that bullet? Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only... It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Sire, it would be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. I mean... Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think Danny was the cover up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act. They don't like you knowing this. Don't worry, we figure this out later. Never been worried in my life, lawman. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there somewhere. All right. Okay. Can I help you? Uh, got my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real. Yep. Good. You got the room for the night, but take it easy on him. Deep down, he really hates being the guy who has to remind you. I would really, really love to be able to speak to the woman who is currently on the roof taking a smoke. The door is still nothing the lieutenant gives you. He doesn't like where this is going. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression.
Kim also tries not to look at the pile of take viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. I did it my way. This is right. He takes a step toward the door. Yeah, I don't want to leave you. Nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. Although I have been gone for about a week, I've basically lost a week and more of memories, so... Man. Looking for something. You could push him by asking him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely looks like someone capable of a lynching. Uh, the On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads with no immediately discernible. But, but, but why? For when the invasion comes, the last thing they'll see before the lights go out is illustrious Rivachol. It doesn't look like the lieutenant cares. He just makes a little note. What is this invasion anyway? It sounds like some... Oh no, it sounds like my invasion. Hey man, you know, there are all sorts of invasions. I thought we could rely on the cops. We're in this together, whether you realize it uh, or not. Right, I don't want to waste too many levels on this. Looking for something? Failing the last time was so demoralizing and puzzling that you just... Let's try it again. Looking for something? Failing the last. All right, let's try it again. Looking for something? Failing the last. All right, let's try it again. We're now at about 0.3% of a chance for this to not go Looking well. Looking for something? Failing the All last. All right, time. we're now at about 15% chance of this happening. Looking for something? Failing the last. All right, now we're more about a 7.5 chance. Maybe let's let's round it up to an eight or nine percent chance. Looking for something? To fail again would be a five percent like chance. Aha! Uh -huh. Only respect two things: strength. Show me and the. Fear. Show me the fucking lorry right. Oh, no, sorry. <clears throat> show me the lorry right. Fucking now! The lady's driver authority. Where is it? Fuck you. I told you. I'm not gonna. There. His voice grows smaller as yours. But you fucking lorry, I know where it is. I'm gonna burn it down, you oh, hear me? Fuck you, man. It's some lorry down there. Green banged up thing. I don't fucking know who she is. When did she go away? I don't know. I don't even know her name. She just rules with the fleet and acts like a big shot. Some dyke, probably. I haven't even seen her for days. Now it's not a big deal for him anymore. This is how he saves face. Where exactly is Alori? As the monument. Down there. The Green Temple. Now leave me the fuck alone, okay? A small temple by the monument. Green. Looks like he got his adrenaline up, too. Alright, this is better than hurting Tommy of it. 
Make way for the master poet. I just think Tommy's a good guy. I don't want Tommy to be hurt by me. This green found A to Z, Contempora, is parked in the shadow of the ruins. Lumi this must be the one he told us about, unless he was lying. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of the seat and two. It feels like you're peeking into someone's home residence. Inside its pry. Use the pry bar to smash the window. Open it from the inside. I don't know how good it is, but this investigation has taken long enough. Pry bar. This green found A to Z. Contempora is parked in the shadow of the ruins, looming over it. Pry bar in hand, you take a hard swing at the window. A loud thunk re looks like the window might be shatterproof. You may have to rethink your approach. Really? Hit Another again. futile thunk. This has been hard enough. No need to make it any harder. He smashes it into the window. Droplets of glass fly everywhere, shattering over the lorry floor. And nice. Mm -hmm. It went better than I expected. Open it from the inside. The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. Damn. One of them particularly catches your eye. A centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. A feeling of tenderness washes over you. A longing even, perhaps. And gentle tragedy. This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography. Less known for her talents than her tragic. She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River. Not far from here, on Boogie Street. A mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera, too. The actresses and the rear it's actor the looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but... Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite the range too. Think there's anything we can do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable with mm. the radio. What else is here? The smell of a thousand cigarettes. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here. A hammer, a pick. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Ah, looks like the drivers did a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. Sandpaper? A novel technique? The sandpaper would also rub off the pattern from the driver's white right boots, so... Yes. Do the honors, he thinks. Connect it yourself. One of the footprints at the crime scene at an aberration. One saw was smoother than the others. Which means that the missing lady driver was present at the lynching. She's the missing aid Fadi. It's Looks here. like her, yes. And she's also the one running the truck trade. What a handful. Now we know for certain who is the missing aid person at the lynching. Do you think that Hardy and his boys could also be involved in the drug operation? It fit what Joyce told us, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Understood. We should still go and see what Titus has got to say on the matter. Are we finished with the lorry? The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. The Let's radio the a metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty. It's 
It's an issue of Petit Ferrique from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called... The Ulen frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... The pull-out tool can slide back. You close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Yeah. All right. We've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found. So we don't do it in front of the company rep. There's nothing for this to do. What do you think, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this... This means it's well-funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. A major player... like the Union. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed. Or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. And last but not least, it looks like the Hardy Boys knew this driver, as we know that she was present at the lynching. This may be the Union connection we've been searching for. The probe and the case converged, he thinks. This was quite the find. What about movie posters? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. A lot of women there. Especially for Lady Driver's cabin. Yes, well... Unimportant. So it turns out all of this is connected to the Union. Like Joyce told us, yes, logistically. But don't expect to bust this open during our stay here. At best, this is an angle we can use against them to other ends as extra ammunition. Mm hmm. Will you ask him open an investigation? We should this? return to the murder case. See what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation sometime later when we're done here. We do not want to get caught in that. What are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved, and I can't imagine there aren't. It's certainly worrisome. All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't mm -hmm. help anyone mm -hmm. here. Okay, debrief over? Debrief over. After you. Sure, Tommy. What's up? I, uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. She in trouble? 
The racist told us where the cabin is. We only searched it. Still better than me, I guess. Told you there's plenty of others who'd tell on her. But is she in trouble? It's gonna be fine. Oh man, that's like a load off my mind. He chooses to believe what's best for her. What's the plan with those rhymes anyway? Oh, you know. Tommy Leham's gonna be a musician. Sprechgesang, but with beats. I've got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. The correct grammar is Tommy Leham. Why Tommy Leham? Tommy Leham was taken. <laughs> my real name's Jerry Lafit. Tommy's way better. It's more him. I had another question actually. The man taps his fingers rhythmically. Yeah, that's often. Good luck to me. Hey yo, funky guys. What a question. Looks like the circus left town. Yeah, yeah. But the clowns are still here. Um, guess what? Connect you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local <sighs> junkies how clean your streets are in precinct 41 kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. Oh, to the honest, you've earned it. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. Ah, it's disgusting. You admit to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Who fucking who? People will always be taking drugs. Yeah, that's what the labor movement is all about. Clean and organized. And the Hardy Boys are running it. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is How dare you? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy Boys here. The eighth body boy, the one who's missing. She runs the thing, right? My answer is fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Finally, you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. Go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? Oh, enough. Good enough for now, thank you. It's going pretty good, isn't it? Hello again, officers. 
Have you come to admire my mural? No, it's okay. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. The door rattles against your knuckles. The door rattles again. But this time... Stop banging on the door! I'm not letting any more strangers inside. It's the police open the door. <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. Please let me inside. It's cold no. out here. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door. There must be another entrance to the east. Came tell every real policeman. Madam, I assure you, we are real police officers. There is no reply. The door rattles again. But this Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers. Hold on, where am I speaking to you? Who I am. It's the police. <laughs> the police I'm not joking. I'll go check the backyard door. Alright. Backyard door it is. What's up with this wall? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Why? Why must we stop to look at Cause I think I can conceptualize it. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Wait a minute, wait. Can I can I still boost with clothing? Uh, you've got one more conceptualization. Just oh, that's an ordinary wall. Nothing to see because Aha! you see it. Finally, this wall is sublime. Look at it. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Wallcraft. <laughs> Color peeled from the very face of God. Oh, Wallfather. Him. I must paint this one. Add even more beauty huh? to it. He sounds tired of it all. Cindy the Skull has all the necessary materials. Talk to her. First, I know you're tired, Kim, but take nourishment, take nourishment mm. from it. Sure. If you must. Yo, Cindy! Hello again, officers. I need some paint Have and your brush too. <laughs> for art. It's for art, okay? Well, if it's for art. But what kind of art are we talking about? Everything's sad and shit, and we need art to make it okay. Just give me the brush. Sound like you're just about to live out your self-pity not make a statement i can't have shit art on my conscience we'll see we'll all see the crush on stream like that i hope you're there, happy there piggy i guess art just isn't really you because you suck in life and in everything damn it 70 percent Come on! They do say Damn it. The painter always paints his own portrait. That's pretty fucked up. Even for you, Pigo. Okay, I won't do that. Please just give me some paint in the brush. I need to do some art. You're a real sad sack. You know that? Go ahead then. Art it up. Just try not to hurt yourself. I'm no self-portraits. Thanks, Cindy. Oh, but I'm all out of fuel oil. Fuel? That wasn't paint. It was heavy fuel oil, marked red for use by government vehicles. What do you think I was using? Aquarelles? You know what you should be able to find in your government-issued vehicle? <laughs> red dyed heavy fuel oil. Can I just use paint? Are you kidding me? Fuel oil is so much cooler. No way you're disfiguring that beautiful Kim, wall. 
a friend. Something as pedestrian. You'd be willing to sacrifice some of your fuel oil for my art. My fuel oil is for my kinema. Use your own fuel if you are unable to contain your artistic impulses. But please, leave my kinema out of it. Right. So I just need to find some oil. Shit. You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. You're whispering. Sounds like you're, you're already in trouble. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony ah. has a great view of Actually, the, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to Is you. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring window. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Um, I need to get inside your apartment building. Can you help me? Help you? No, sorry, gendarme. I have to run. Looks like you got a good view of the whirling backyard. Can you tell me anything about hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a... What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? Did I? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more... Muscular gentleman. Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the court yet again. Snow blankets the old patio chairs and dead house plants, and all the neighboring windows are black. A downy blanket of white to cover up the miserable poverty of the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. <laughs> you don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing no with his cigarette. Can you Under tell the me? gray sky, snow continues to pile on the neighboring window sills. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? He scans the courtyard. It's silent. At the bottom of a well, every sound captured and reflected Ask back. him again. Does not really need your name. And I really need to finish this cigarette. But he hasn't left yet. Help you. All right, no. we'll talk later. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Please stay. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, Listen. hidden behind the curtains. I'm just trying to make things okay again. Can we meet again somewhere else? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. There's snow gathering on his hair and on his shoulders. A speckle of white against the purple that hangs loose on his slender frame. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on. What's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. Thank you so much, dear Smoke on the Balcony. Ah, he seems like a good guy. He's gone. No point in running. Tournaments like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, he did leave us a sign. Did you see that? 
He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for him. A stone, like any. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity he doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and the man will just have to go in and see. All right, let's go then. Welcome to an entirely new world. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure. Gone, gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. You are the big communism builder now. It's you or no one. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. No reply. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. The mattress. Low number nine is locked. Only give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> uh, you're right. Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> you're still worried. It's very worried. It's very worried. <laughs> now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm looking for the parent of a kid named Kuna. The waiters are at the end of this hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. I'm also looking for a young male in his mid-twenties, stuck here, skinny build, the smoke on the balcony. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear him. What's he in trouble for? No trouble. I just want to talk for him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? What was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Where are you, by the way? No one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Do you also live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching <sighs> bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. I have a few questions about the apartment. Ask away, policeman. Let's be the padlock, though. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Astrology? Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. I mean, it's stars and endless. I think that's a symbol of communism. A symbol of what now? Um... Communism, you know, like the World Revolution. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, don't mind it then. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste? Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still, she leaves an old lady to her business. 
more than I can say <laughs> for others. Okay, okay, I get the hint. That's all then. Thank you very much. Some kind of a response. All right, time to beat up. Time to beat up someone's dead. That's not here. On the table. What happened here? It looks so sad. Put your emotions aside. Try to focus on abstract input. But this reeks of sadness. It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Oh, it's a little something in the fridge. Indeed. Wasn't this supposed to be Kuna's apartment? Where is he? Is he dead here? Oh, it's the exit. Give me a moment. The waiters are at the end of this hallway, right next to the communal bathroom. Secure to the door frame ah, the other end. Okay. Chain. An unpaid energy bill is attached, threatening to cut off the electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Reuter. And the place has three say. months worth of utility bills. No response. You'll need to equip the chain cut. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges. Snip. The cutter goes through them like dead leaves. I know there's no stopping you, but let's at least make this quick. All right. phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamine, conveniently equipped okay, with a straw. Of the the table. Confiscated. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens instead to something in the other room. He pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing. Good day, mister. Yes, things with something sour. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed. A stained parka. Some towels and a duvet. Some socks, even. Look at the power mm. Something underneath there is breathing. It's not too late. No one's going to blame you for backing out. You don't have to do this. Just get out. Nope. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. Ah. You hear a growl. There is something alive. Let's pull the blanket off. You see a 60-year-old fat red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol and God knows what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down. He's already down. 
Is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. <laughs> he points to a fleshy lump sticking out from the other end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching from time to time. A groan rises from the man's throat, dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. Perception. I can't level up anyway. It's Kuma's well, farm, are we seeing? Judging by the color of his hair, I would say yes. It the lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. I was expecting something worse. I think he's still quite dead. I mean, what he has come to. This man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but at least he won't be beating his son. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty, and frozen. It's clear that the person oh, behind wait. them what happened is to his eyes? Thought. Can't you tell? It happens to exceptionally committed substance abusers. They fall asleep with their eyelids still open. Not a pretty sight. Dear Samus, so I'm not sure he's not dead. Funk. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Look, he's trying to communicate. Maybe we should help him somehow. What is there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit, but he's already on his side. We could take him to Remedy or Saint Baptiste, but he doesn't have money for medical services. The armed sorts would turn him down. They don't do charity for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'd be dead in a few. Years, months, weeks. The pile of blankets grunts miserably. The man groans once again, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables, and then... Falls back again, limp and defeated by sleep. A loud snore escapes his mouth. Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body. The aging alcoholic is still there, breathing. Suppressing. This door has been closed. No reply. No reply. No reply. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The walking stops abruptly. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated. Let's go. We don't have a reason to be. It's generally easier to do things if you. Yes, Annie. Oh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves, but here you are. That's right, we've evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. Get you later, Cindy. Ah, this is the call room. <laughs> I 
Captain, have you been sleeping in the cold room? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Oh, not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. Don't you have a real one? Does anyone in a city like this? If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep. Fortified herself against it. Yes. You're a miner. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me, but somehow it never happens. It's not the nicest place, but I guess I'll have to do it. doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Shoot, piggy. Mm, okay. Wait, I can I can access the balcony from the other side as well. That is the secret. Rosemary thyme and cactus. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here, room number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? He might know something. Suddenly, he's a little worried, but don't worry. It's mostly all still here. Right, tomorrow, tomorrow 20 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. The leather upholstery is worn and rough against your jaw. You don't hear any movement. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. Tell me what is your opinion of the task we're undertaking? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for. But every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So don't mind if I unlock the door? I mind that the local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to... On the other hand, we could just leave and tell Evrard we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Yes, presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. The door is right here. You can just open... Besides, if you never open it, you're never gonna find out what's behind the door. 
Let's leave it for now and get to talking with Uno. Ukuness. Trying to sneak up on me again. All right. Relax, Delicato. Yeah, maybe the. Looks like there's more construction. Let's take it. Hey, Jess. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Yes, my eyes on the harbor have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Exactly, I was eyes located. It doesn't really matter, and I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild pine, in any case, is a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official? She's trying to conceal her excitement, but the slight the lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. Exactly. But what? Hold on, you seem anxious to know, what is that? I I've kept my eye on the Camuners. Even tried to get to know one. It's a mystery I'm already invested in. Which one of them, if any, could organize such a complex operation? It will be an investigation. That's all I can say. Okay. I thank you for sharing that much with me. My employer thanks you as well, in any case. You've held up your end of our arrangement. Now it's my turn. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. Bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, man. This is also the RCM's worst case scenario. Then we're on the same page. As grim as it may be. Alright, I've already got a connection between the lynching and the strike, but I need your testimony. I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. Momentary lapse of faith. Dispatched after I relayed the union's initial offer. Every worker. A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. They did not appreciate the mm -hmm. humor. Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the union into surrendering. Who are they exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. And one of them is dead. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So what happened? The story is one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders for now. No. It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded... What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. Investigation upon investigation here in Martinez, <sighs> racing towards some dark deadline. Oh boy. I have to say, that is not disco. It is very far from disco. My only hope is that you provide a single, concrete suspect 
before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, if you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to, to project strength and power. The Debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. The Serai's giant hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. That's a pretty bleak scenario. Many bleak scenarios have already come true. Nameless, badgerless detective of the citizens' militia. All we can do is keep the rest from going the same way. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. He said the deceased assaulted a woman. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Who did the passing on then? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. It's what they believe. What did this teenager just by the canal say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. The lieutenant consults his notebook. Ah, uh, we haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk. Maybe on narcotics, too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. Who was this woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor. About a rumor. In any case, it's what the... You meet her soon enough, you feel. This colonel, the one who was hanged, did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes. But I did not know him. You don't know how you know. It's not written on her face, nor in her voice. But she had sympathy for this man. Liked him. Liked is a bit strong. He... He was the most <sighs> charismatic among them. He handled all the talking. His departure left a major gap in the group's <laughs> communication skills. And his name was? Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Okay, tell me about the other person. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis DePaul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. DePaul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face. Then... Shakes her head. I can't remember. There's a pang of regret in her voice. The lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. That's all right, then. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his spatial expressions. Indeed, this matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent, Oranese, or Missinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In <laughs> a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it, through the injury. Where That's all I know, I guess. Where are the two I remaining? Met him once. Sorry, where are the remaining two marks now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes, ghetto savages. 
It will not be a fruitful meeting. Vigilantes, you're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Rivershaw. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't okay. appear involved. Where are these mercenaries? One is obviously the scab leader at the harbor gates. The one chanting the idiotic Yeah, that makes sense. He's barely maintaining his disguise. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the Lorange Riders. One must be the goon in, in ill-fitting work clothes by the other way. It's the scab leader. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. One is probably in a building overlooking the roundabout. I could afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. No question. I hope I can answer it better. How much time do we have? Until the executions start. Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. It's a matter of days, not weeks. That's enough for now. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. Now, if there is anything else, yeah, yeah, there's something. With, um, please ask. Can you show? Can you tell me about these tattoos? Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. For about half a minute, in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. What do you think? Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. She has no excess of emotions for this cadaver. Has she seen dead bodies before? It's like... What do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see... If I can read the web of interdependencies between these points, the stars, I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Port cities, on the oceans. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the DeLorean century. As early as 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. What is the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? Hmm. Him to now no solace first than cytoscopes. That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse. What travels did the dead men make? Quite a few. Redefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Pretto Grangi through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Pleto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this, Revachol. Those are the two constants, Redefort on the shoulder and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the Interislary Age. The old, old world passing by and the new new world already here you said you can't read it i can't this man was no sailor and these are no ports i can understand geographic fragments 
but not their meaning. Somewhere in an office lit by a single green desk lamp, Captain Ptolemyus Price, 58, bald and bespeckled, is writing in the ledger on his desk. Rows and rows of days and weeks, laconic remarks in a single column. Patrol, case, vacation, injured. In Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. This man is no brother of mine, but this is a service history. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways. Just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. For all the boys looking for an adventure, a blood spatter on the seas. Any do you pretend more? His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go into... It could go this or the other way. Maybe if you're tactful, it could be beneficial. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a danger. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. We will be careful, ma'am. Is there this? anything else I can help you with? I've talked to Albert Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually, corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Yes, your disgusting necktie agrees completely. Let's gossip. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Oh, thank you, it's off now. Whew. I have gotten a lot more questions. Do not have a map, I just realized. <laughs> and I still want to go to uh, Uno, tell him what is dead. I'm honestly not entirely sure what to really tell him. I bet she's the other mercenary. Hey, Kuno. Yeah, did you fuck in there? Just have to pick her. How's that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Like, 
You like some kind of musician? Yeah, Kuno plays on Snuff Radio, fucks pigs, lies, fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. I also found a plate covered with powder residue. I was with the tube of magnesium, Kuno. It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the You're time. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. All right. On a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything That's about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired. I've had enough of this. All right. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. I took a bit of a drug right. situation. So you got Kuno's kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's kilo. Then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way. Street way. And you're going to ask who I got past your dad? Where's on the street is? You said your little friend in dressed as a hooker. Distraction style. That's some sick shit. Not a single muscle moves on the lieutenant's face. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo, then we shoot the shit. By kilo and gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. All right. I'm keeping it. You don't need more drugs. You're 12. All right. Kuno knew you'd try that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno! Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. Know this, pig. Shit is major. Major fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This is fucking domino shit. It's hard to see how. Not giving a boy a bag of amphetamine would cause some catastrophic cascade response. Hard to see, but easy to feel. Somehow, this will change things. It's not hard to see at all. You hand out drugs to kids. The lieutenant's faith in your judgment will diminish significantly. What if any is the downside of not giving the drugs to Kuna? None that you can see. No, you can see it. This young man has junior officer material in him, in another life, where he trusts you. Tick, 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 tick. Decision time. What's it gonna uh, be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? Mm -hmm. Should I give Kuno the drugs? And again, he's a kid, and I shouldn't be given a kid drugs. All right, all right, you fucked the Kuno. Everybody, Kuno got fucked by his pocket pig. Just when we're getting our business on, the... P I told you he can't be trusted! I told you, I told you, I told... I told you he'd steal the shit! Relax, see? We got plenty of Kilo. Kilo underground, in the tree. This ain't about that. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged this shit. Now everything is fucked between us. 
How are you going to make this up to the Kuno, huh? There is genuine disappointment below the act, sire. In truth, Kuno doesn't really believe there's anything you can do to make up for this. The damage is irreparable. Kuno met your dad. Yeah? How the fuck are you still alive, pig? Kuno, your dad is half dead. He's a half dead alcoholic. He was looking and un sleeping under some clothes. His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again, reorienting himself. Fuck right. Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you have a way in. Narrow window, Kuno window. <sighs> Whatever scary thing he might have been, he's nothing now. Yeah, Kuno's dad is fucking nothing. Fucking coma shit, stroke shit. Kuno's dad is so fucking violent. He's had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit. Crime shit. Fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. Revishal West style. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. There's a touch of grief in there. Fuck are you talking, sad? Kuno's got hard shit. Death shit. Nothing shit. You don't have to turn into that Kuno. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. You think because you took Kuno's speed, Kuno's gonna sob like a f Turn into... Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is... Kuno is that shit. Kuno won! Oh, you won, Kuno! Relief is palpable. The little head jumps up and down behind the fence. I looked around in there. It's not the easy life you've got going on in that apartment. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Yeah, we got plans. There are tons of unpaid utility bills there. Fuck right there were. Fucking three years or some shit. That's no place to live in. You have to find somewhere else. That's right. It's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground. La Roim shit. Ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno! Alright, let's end on to you. I did right not to give you the drugs. Let's conclude this. That didn't change shit, pig. That only made things worse. Fucking social worker shit. It doesn't work, pig. It doesn't work, Kuno. Only our shit works. She must repeat it. Use every chance to confirm that version of reality. She tries to bind their fates together. She needs him. Bad. The fuck do you want with it? Good call, pig My Kuno doesn't fucking care. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. So there's a lack of magnesium in you? Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish. Due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. I need to mag it up. You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane. <laughs> You're saying I need to become a magnesium based yes. life form. If you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. All right. That's a lot. I open the five days I still have to finish all of this crime. I will find a way to save little old Kuno and maybe even Kunet. But until then, 
I need to go to bed. It's pretty late now. My camera circle, my, my, my camera's battery is kind of dying. And I've also been spazzing around a bit, <laughs> if you're looking at the model. But that's still, thank you all for being here. Special thank you to Elephantian Wani Ballet. He's been here for quite a long time. And I'll see you in the next stream. Bye bye.